Hey everybody, this is JJ from LTX 2023. We're here at the ASUS booth, and uh, I'm really excited. I'm here with one of my absolute favorite builders and modders, uh, Stuart Tonks from GGF. Thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, we're gonna be doing a really cool build. Uh, Stuart's actually gonna probably be doing yep. most of the build. I'm gonna be guiding you guys through a little bit of the cool hardware that you see out here in front of me. This is, uh, I think, a very long-awaited collaboration, which is a follow-up to what we've already been doing in the past with our IP collabs, where we've done everything from Call of Duty, to, of course, Gundam, to Demon Slayer, to, of course, the EBO one, which was super popular. And we're really excited. Just last week, we, of course, announcement. We fully unveiled it. The EBO 2 lineup, which you can see, is this whole set of hardware. I think for the most part, we might be missing uh, the desk mat. Um, yeah. We're missing some of the keycaps. Um, but for the most part, this is pretty much the majority of the lineup. So we're going to be doing a full PC build. Uh, Stuart, should what do you good, think? Should be good. We've got a bit over three hours. So I think we can, uh, oh, I can probably smash <laughs> yeah. it out. So <laughs> yeah. we'll I think so. See I mean, how we go. no hard lines, no pumps. No, no, no. Right? No, 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 no tubing, no bends. Should so be, I, I think you're going to be all right, right? This awesome. is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, so for those of you guys that are going to be interested, definitely make sure to just keep us following us on terms of our social channels, our PC DIY group. And you'll be finding out about a bit more information in terms of when this is going to be coming out in the not too distant future. We are going to be doing a wave based release which means we'll have like a wave one wave two wave three wave four rolling over into october uh where you'll have the opportunity to be able to pick up this limited edition hardware but again it's limited edition so once it's gone it's, it's go gone it's gonna go so, quick, so yeah and i think it is i think it's definitely gonna go Very quick cool. so uh before we kick off the build what do you think is uh your favorite piece uh, from the actual hardware collab that we've got here it's 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 hard between I would say the motherboard mm -hmm. and of course the gpu but, the gpu but right being, being me being custom cooling the air cooler would probably go most of the time, so <laughs> yeah, I'd have yeah. to favor the motherboard because if I block the motherboard, motherboard, you can still see this. You still see that beautiful this ID. beautiful red yeah. aesthetic, so very nice. And this is based off this is a hero. Yep, that's Maximus Hero. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, very I would nice. agree with you. I think I'm probably I would probably go with. I, I know I do really like the colorway in terms of what we've done with the Hyperion. It's just so it stands out. I mean, the chassis already stands out quite a bit in terms of its design. And then we um, the back. Yeah, I mean, the back plate is just really, really nice, right? Just, I mean, you're never going to see I, it. I'm kind of glad you went with just the subtle black and white. You didn't yep. you didn't bring the red over, mm -hmm. and it's probably not necessary. So I do like how that just transitions over. And one of the cool things you guys see, hopefully, when we get everything uh, actually lit up, even though we won't have the OS, uh, it should be able to light up. There's some default animations that are all custom to even get Yeah, I'll just shoot so, behind here, yeah. the IO cover. And so the, the Polymo display, and also probably one of my favorites is the new Ryogen 3. This will also have all custom GIFs and animations that you'll see that'll be specific for Evangelion. So it'll be pretty sweet. So um, I think we'll get ready to go ahead and get started in the build. Um, I'll probably ask you, from your perspective, what's where's your starting point? Everybody kind of sometimes is a little bit different. Do you keep it up? Do you lay it down? Do you put the CPU this in is, first? This is probably my fourth or fifth build in the Hyperion. Right. Uh, crazy case, very big case. Huh. Normally I like to just plan everything out, but everything's already out, re ready to go. Even, unfortunately, the peels have already been done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is absolutely no plastic peeling I can do in this live stream at all. Everything do, do, has been do, taken even, off. Even the PSU? Yeah, everything's everything? been taken off. Yeah, so. we, we got no peels for you. No Sorry, peels. guys. I mean, uh, we'll get to uncap the thermal compound. Yeah, exactly. On, on the, so basically, the I like to get everything ready, but it's all done. Uh, yeah. Then I'll probably start with things like the power supply, get okay. cake, get cables routed but then i also like to do the motherboard get the cpu in so uh the all-in-one cooler i'll probably mount that uh mount the motherboard in first or and then get the all-in-one cooler in and then yep. i'll mount the uh the block obviously to the motherboard once it's in yep. and then it'll be basically the last thing will be the video card because we are using the stock fans in the case so there's yep. no other extra fans and then lastly will be things like the uh, GPU cable yep. for the uh, video to card. Totally course. makes sense. And even from the graphics card, putting it in almost as the last item, uh, definitely you don't want to fight against this. It's so large, yeah, exactly. right? You wouldn't want it kind of yep. blocking anything. So and you want to give yourself a awesome. little I haven't actually seen this. Has this been yeah, that's previous? The, yeah, so that's actually, for you guys that didn't know, so that's the Herculix. Right, so that that's is. our GPU stand. It's got a really cool design where you can kind of lift it. And then so, it even has a fine tune, yep, yep. fine tune pad up there. That's just crazy. So it's yeah. awesome putting that in. And seeing how that goes gives it a nice little support there right yeah, exactly. even though the hyperion already has its own integrated gpu yeah, support yeah. this is, is going to just level yeah, it we'll, up we'll right throw that in and give it a little bit of flair so yeah. um i think we'll go ahead and start get started right yeah, sounds good yeah 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 all right so i'm gonna go ahead and see if anyone's uh yeah i've, I've got a, a lot laptop here guys so i'll be able to go ahead and check out the chat see what guys you drop in if you guys 
general questions regarding anything in terms of the hardware side, as I noted, we'll be talking about kind of some of the features, functions, the spec of what we've got here. Um, but also feel free if you've got questions in terms of PC DIY, you know, overclocking, water cooling, you know, of course, we're talking to one of the best in the game right here next to me that's well, thank you. done thank you. all types of builds, you know, from soft tubing to hard line, right? Um, you know, and if you guys haven't, make sure to check out his channels. Uh, we do have them linked in the description. So if you guys want to check out some awesome build inspiration, definitely do that. So let's see who we have joining us here. Uh, we've got uh, Ken joining us. We've got Janny joining us. Uh, Gabrielle is also joining us right here. Um, so Gabrielle giving us some feedback. Yeah, I know, but the combination on the PC just popped better for me with EV01. And so that one's one that I've definitely been torn by, right? Like I've had a couple of people say this continues to kind of grow on them. Uh, there's also sometimes an affinity with the character. I really did love EV01 with that purple and the green, which just was also something that we yeah. didn't necessarily ever see in the PC space, right? Uh, red is, a, I think, a little bit more common color, right? We, yeah, it is. We don't definitely see it as of late. A lot of the stuff is monochrome, right? So blacks and grays and whites yeah. is generally what's leading a lot of the PC hardware space. But definitely for years, there was a lot of red in components and definitely even a lot of red with ROG. But I definitely feel you when it comes to that that green and that purple so popping. It's, it's basically like bringing that rog back, but it's a different style. Yeah. Rog. So it's not it's not like the thoroughbred original rog because this red, depending on how it looks on film, it's it's like a more anodized. Yep. Uh, yeah. Lighter red. It has so a, it that, has a little bit of like a soft, almost yeah, like you said, an yeah. anodization, a little bit of a light kind of matte sheen to it, right? Where it's not glossy and heavy. It's not super uh, bold, which I kind of think makes makes sense there. Uh, H2O Computers, a fan of the stream, who's normally joining us here, is right. I'm doing a custom build loop for EV1 uh, with a 4090 13th gen, better late than never. Wow. Um, I wonder where you got that. You might have had to pick that up like on eBay. Yeah. Uh, or maybe you had it in the reserves, right? Yeah. Because uh, I know a lot of people would still love. And actually, that's pretty cool, right? Is that even with EV01, because they're still all supported on the terms of the platform, you know, you've got BIOS update, you, you can, can still support you know, 12th, 13th gen, even upcoming you, next-gen CPUs. Good to go, so. so that's actually pretty cool, right? Uh, Ken, throwing in that knowledge, correct. It is based um, in terms of a red theme. That is right, right? We also got Sue Min joining us also in the stream. Iron Maiden, I love that. And, oh, fantastic. Got Snep also joining us. Awesome. Another grandmaster, yep. one of the best in the game. Uh, and of course, Canadian. So kind of, I think, uh, in alignment, right? If we're talking about great builders from Canada, uh, it's fantastic to have you here. So uh, thanks so much for joining us guys on the screen. So let's see right now, first up. It's gonna be hard to see because it's just the fixed yeah, yeah, camera. Yeah, I'll no, try, no and, try and get some angles for the guys to. Yeah, so right now, pretty much what he's tackling first is it looks like he's mounting in some of that bracket hardware, right? So the bracket hardware for most of you probably pretty familiar. You've got your AIO cooling solution, but to be able to make sure that you affix, of course, that base, that contact plate, you need to have your bracket on the motherboard. That's basically done there. Yep. Full. So you got your bracket, you got your four screws, and that'll pretty much thread in right here, right? So those four contact points, they'll mount on, we'll be good to go. CPU is going to get ready to go in there. What are we doing on the CPU side? Uh, 12900K. 12900K, so still a beastly part. Of course, this board, it's the Maximus uh, series. You can fully, of course, support any one of the current uh, latest generation Intel series CPUs. Um, some of the really cool features on the Maxim series board, uh, especially being a K part, it's got a really cool feature called ASUS AIOC. There's actually some really advanced built in logic. And what it essentially does is it, it'll detect the CPU. And once you get your system up and running, it's also going to be tracking the temperature for your CPU. And once it tracks the temperature, it'll automatically define an overclock that is specific to your cooling performance. So the really cool thing about that is if you actually built your system with, let's say, like a 240 millimeter AO, and then maybe a year down the road, you upgrade to maybe like a custom loop, yeah. your actual overclocking results would be different yep. because the algorithm actually automatically maps the overclock based on whatever your cooler's performance is. So we're the only buddy in the industry to actually offer that type of technology. Um, the other really cool part to it is it utilizes what's called an adaptive voltage, which means that it's efficient and effective. When your CPU is essentially not working, the voltage comes down. And when you're actually gaming and you want that bump up in voltage to stabilize the frequency, it goes up. So it's a really awesome feature. One of the things that I most love about our ROG series uh, and that ASUS AIOC feature. And I know for some of you in the chat, let me know, have you actually tried out ASUS AIOC on your board? Has it been a cool experience for you? Yeah. Just set it and off, off yep. it goes. That's actually on my editing PC. 
Oh, sweet. 39k yeah. runs at 6.1. 6.1. Not, not, not all the time. Yeah, 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 exactly. Course, but... Because it does do what's called per core overclocking. The great thing about that is that, again, we maximize the margin, right? We're going to give you that uplift. It actually does overclock your E cores. It overclocks the P yeah. cores, right? But it does it really effectively and efficiently. You know, some of the uh, old school overclockers out there, they do something that's called a static vid voltage, which means that if I thought about voltage kind of like this, it's constant. And that means that it doesn't go down. Literally, if I'm literally browsing the internet or watching a stream or listening to something, It'll always um, be. it's always at that fixed voltage, which isn't really that efficient. You're, you're mm -hmm. gonna consume more power. You're gonna actually increase the likelihood of having what's called voltage segregation. Um, you're producing more heat. Yep. But in our mechanism, because we're using that adaptive voltage, it's more dynamic. So it helps to preserve more of the lifespan while maximizing the investment you made in a K-part, yep. right? Because yep. if you bought a K-part, you don't have to overclock it, but you know, that's part of the value yeah. add, right? Yeah, that's the point of it. Yeah. So right, uh, SSD, what are we? SSD. Oh, this is a crucial P5 Plus. P5 Plus, that's it's a very like fast two, drive. Two terabyte. Two so terabytes, so that'll be nice. That's of course, of uh, I know a lot of us, uh, <laughs> we appreciate having a bigger M.2 SSD with games. Uh, being pretty large, right? You know, so, uh, you know, last update on Cyberpunk, right? I think it was breaking like 120 well, games. I was, when you said games, I was going to say one game, <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> Call of Duty, of course, right? Let me know, what's the biggest game install you've got right now in your Steam library, right? Or, you know, Epic or whatever it might be. Uh, let me know, what's the biggest game you're running? So for those you might be wondering about, one of the also really cool things, and actually, um, we can pop off that heat oh, yeah. really quick. Um, something you guys might not be aware of with bigger capacity drives, right? One of the cool things that you actually do have that you don't necessarily see, and if you've had different motherboards, is this actually back heatsink design. So on larger drives- Oh, that pushes down. Yeah, on, on larger drives, you're actually gonna have sometimes NAND on the front and the back of your yeah. M.2 SSD. So we were actually the first to implement a dual contact design, meaning that you've got a heatsink and yeah. a thermal pad on the back, and then yeah. Stuart's also got the yeah, heatsink right there one, yeah. for the front. So that means we get the best optimal performance, and that's yeah. really important for the highest performing Gen 4 and Gen 5 drives, you actually really want to make sure that they don't get too hot. So uh, he's mounting that on there. Uh, the Hero actually supports up to a total of five M.2 SSDs. You know, and it, we, I don't know if we ended up having the box, but I'm interested to see if the actual adding card. Yeah, can we I, see if we got I the box, if the adding card is actually colored? Instead of just being the black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, yeah be, okay. I'd be interested to see. I, it's the first time for me. You know, sometimes that's one of the crazy things. You know, I've been with the company for 15 years. I get the chance to look at a lot of different things, but sometimes we're, we're literally going up to the wire to be able to get the latest hardware in terms of production. And so um, I'm interested to see if our actually PCI adding card is actually a different color. So we're gonna go ahead and check that out in a little bit. But uh, for sure, that's another great feature that you've got on the Hero is also that flexibility that I really love the adding card for flexibility for guys like Stuart who are doing water-cooled builds. Because one of the things yeah. that happens, right, especially when you go hard line, you start to limit your physical accessibility yeah, sometimes right. to certain slots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we don't have the box. No worries. We'll go from there. So what, we're going to install some dims? Yep, this is crucial. This is their DDR5 Pro. Yeah, so this is actually a great a stick of memory. If you guys haven't checked out the stream, we did this with our friends over at Crucial. Um, it features actually a really cool design. They use a base, what's called JDEC profile, that is not an XMP profile. The benefit that that means is that when you install this memory, it's 100% plug and play. Traditionally, when you take an overclock stick, you install it, it won't run at its speed until you engage something called XMP. But the great thing is here, you literally install it and it will automatically run at 5600 MT, which is the rated frequency for memory on 13th gen. On 12th gen, it's a little bit lower. Uh, actually, the maximum initial speed is 4800, right? Um, so. Either which way, it'll automatically post at that speed. So that's great. And I can tell you, our friends over at Crucial don't necessarily recommend this as an overclocking kit, but I have overclocked these kits to actually 6,000 MT, so they do have some margin in nice. there. For those that you want to take advantage of the Hero, which is definitely an OC-centric board. Yeah, so thank you. I'm going to give you that last dim, and we're going to go ahead and populate that. Another cool thing that you may not know about the Maximus Hero 2 is going to be that it has an integrated mem test function. It's one of my favorite features that we introduced now a couple of years ago, where when you get your system all up and running before you even get into Windows, if you just want to make sure that it's working okay, you don't got to download like a bootable USB utility. You don't have to even get into Windows. You can yeah. literally just boot into the BIOS, run the mem test, and you can actually help to check yeah. your system and make sure that the memory's oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. So it's a cool feature. So uh, let's go ahead yep. and show that off there. We're looking pretty good. 
So that's basically it in terms of motherboard assembly. Yeah. So we can either install that now, or we can put that aside and then get the PSU ready. Yeah, I think uh, let's go ahead and tackle the PSU. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and then maybe uh, let some people take some shots of this one a little bit closer and uh, talk about a little bit on the I.O. while you go ahead and prep yep, that uh, PSU. I'll get the cables for this. I'm going to go ahead and quickly check, see if we guys any any comments from you guys. So, yeah, so Ken goes, yeah, you don't need to set the XMP profile. That is correct. You don't need to set it. That is very specific to this kit of memory. Most other kits of memory on the market, if you bought like a 6,000 MT kit, when you install it, you have to engage XMP. If not, the memory will automatically default, usually to 4,800 MT. So the thing I like about this is that, again, it might not necessarily be the fastest kit, but if we just talk about like a streamlined experience, you want something stable, reliable, and kind of trouble-free where you don't have to think about it, it's a really great option to be able to just drop it in there and have it run without any issues. Oh, we got Justin Chu, another great uh, builder and member from our PCDIY community. If you guys also have not checked out his uh, socials, some fantastic builds. He did an awesome recent build uh, featuring our uh, formula series too. Pretty cool. We got uh, so red, so rad. I'm digging that, I'm digging that. So red, so rad. Pretty sweet, right? Uh, H2O Computers also giving us that great M.2 cooling solution feedback. So pretty sweet. Oh, okay. Oh my. Do we want to talk about the, the cables? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't actually have. So the original cables, so this is a Thor P2. Yep, that's our P2. So that's our flagship 1, series. 1,000 watt. Yep. It does come with custom red cables. Yep. But, of course, I did think ahead and I did go out to the good guys at Cable Mod yep. and I got a custom set of cables. Now, you guys, you didn't really give me much to go by when it came to yeah, the, the color scheme. scheme. You yeah, just yeah. said it's red and orange. And I said, yeah. well, there's a lot of reds and there's it's a lot of orange out there. So that's 100%. all I could go by. So I just went on their configurator. Uh, I decided to do a kit of uh, purely red and orange, and then I did yep. another kit of red, orange, and I thought, let's add a line of black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decided to give to you go, a little of that contrast. We decided to go with the, the line of black on each end, because I think that contrasts like that. well with the motherboard, happens to go well with the memory, memory. and then the case as well, of course, has that yeah. black in there as well. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, so for those that are checking out the stream, uh, just, again, as clarification, as Stuart's noted, right, the cables that do actually come included with the Thor are different. They are red. I think they're just all red. Yeah. All red, and yep. maybe black. Yep, they're all red. Um, but one thing that you guys may or may not know, one of the cool things that we have done for years, we've been a really big collaborator with Cable Mods. So if you've actually bought an ASUS Thor series, Loki series, PSU, many of our other products, they actually come included with a 20% coupon. It's actually a pretty sweet savings yep, in terms yep. of helping you get your custom cables. So if you want to be able to do something awesome like this, you know, Cable Mods, one of the best in the game where you can do so many different options really easy to be able to go into their cable configurator and be able to choose different types of materials if you want something that's a little bit more matte if you yeah. want of course go with something a little bit more of a gloss finish right and of course all types of colors and of course do have options of supporting the latest generation 12 volt high power as well so you got a lot of choice from you there but i definitely agree i think this this color what do you guys let it know did stuart knit it did, did he nail well, it considering i only have one orange yes. on the configurator <laughs> they have two reds a yes. blood red and I would say a normal red, so... Yeah, I, I but I think, I think, oh, I I think, think it came out really well. Good, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think definitely looking at the board, I mean, if we didn't tell you, just kind of going side by side there, right? I think you would probably think yeah. that that just came yeah, exactly. came with it, right? Came in oh. the box. Well, that's so, good then. Pretty sweet. Uh, I'm going to round it out just for reference here and just letting you guys know in terms of the connectivity on the board right here. So one of the really cool things about the higher and Maxima series is you also get that Thunderbolt connectivity on there. You get that Wi-Fi 6E, you get that 2.5 gigabit LAN, you get your clear CMOS and your USB BOS flashback along with that really nice integrated IO shield, which now it's kind of part for parcel. We kind of expect mm. it, but it's kind of important to remember for a long time before we actually put it on motherboards. I don't remember yeah. doing a system without an uh, IO shield, but yet you still see those memes where yeah. someone's built a computer and hey, we've got the IO shield. I'm like, the meme is still going around, but now <laughs> every single board I've seen has the IO yeah, shield. Yeah, definitely at least. I mean, we've rolled it down to even now like B series chipsets yeah. have it. It's still not 100% of yeah, our product portfolio, but you know, I'd probably say it's close to 65% yeah. of our product portfolio. And definitely if you start to get into the, the anything in the enthusiast mid range, yeah. uh, you're for sure getting it. Uh, one last cool thing that I do want to touch on that sometimes people aren't aware of that we did introduce recently is this little switch, this alteration mode switch. Now, we're not using uh, the ability for the Hyperion to support a vertical mount for this graphics card, yeah. right? But uh, this actually alteration switch actually allows you to change the operating mode for the PCI Express 
in the event that you ran into an issue. What we found is as vertical mounts started to become more popular, sometimes people yeah, would have okay. a signaling issue. Yep. They'd end up having to kind of go back into the BIOS and toggle yep. back to like an older PCI Express gen oh, okay. mode so that would to just... get it to work. Yeah, so, because before what you would have to do is they like have to take out the plug GPU or you'd have to plug in back yeah. into your iGPU to get yeah. it to all work. But now you can literally just toggle that switch uh, okay. and that'll allow you to go from either- So what's this, a Gen, gen 4, Gen yeah, or Gen, gen 4, 5? Yeah, Gen 4, yeah, you, well, there's nothing Gen 5 on the market. So yeah. the default is either Gen 4 yeah. or Gen 3. Yeah. So you can okay. toggle back and forth before those. Okay. And if you don't use it for actually that, you can use it as a hardware fan control. And I've seen nobody talk about that, but okay. it's a really cool feature. So. If you want to essentially have your fans connected to all the chassis fan headers, you can toggle in the UEFI BIOS for this switch to work for fans. So yeah. then if you want different fan speeds like low, medium, or high, you could awesome. just use it as that okay, function. that's pretty cool. Yeah, a little bit basic. Of course, a lot of you probably using either the more advanced firmware controls or like a custom yeah. controller or something like that, but it's just a little ex yeah, auxiliary oh, function. All right, uh, so we're gonna pop in the uh, Yeah, we're gonna start working on the... Uh... Go ahead and, and move this. Now. Uh, a little bit of a tease, right? Uh, mm, uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, so we're going to be going standard horizontal. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, because we don't that's have... a, everybody that watches the stream knows JJ's personal preference is horizontal mounting. I, I would have gone vertical. Yeah. Only because, to be honest. Well, think, you get this. I, I would agree here that I, I think wouldn't. That. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some beautiful designs, but the other thing yeah. is that. This, that, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, see, that's the other thing there, right? Uh, for me, we do a, such a great job on our backplate yeah. designs, yeah, and no, especially this good. being the key character, yeah. I want to see that. And I still think this has a beautiful just yeah. red and black with that, and then I've got that nice kind of yeah. uh, quad zone LED. So the truth is, though, it looks fantastic either yeah, which either way. way. Either which way. We just don't have a vertical riser. So yeah, so yeah, of course, not so. having the vertical yeah, riser means we're going to go horizontal. Um, but let us know in the chat. What do you think? Would you mount it vertically? Or would you mount it horizontally? And there's no right or wrong choice, um, especially when your chassis has got room for it. Uh, you can really go with whatever works best for you. But also the other factor, right, is we're using the Herculex, which is a requirement that if you're going to use this, you also have to go horizontal, right? So if yep. we're going to use that, we're going to go horizontal. All right. Oh, actually, right before I do, I do actually right. want to show you guys, and I'm going to check the chat in a second. Forgot to show you one of my favorite things awesome. about this collab is that you get this awesome box if you get the Thor power supply, all of it comes in this really cool box, which even when you're done, you got it all built. This is just something kind of cool you can put around your dinner, your desk, your office, your setup. If you want to put some other grab or swag or whatever in there, it's pretty cool, but it's just a nice little touch. Is, is there any reason why you came up with the PSU in this case and not something like the GPU or the, the motherboard or? Yeah. That would be pretty sick if the GPU Yeah, like came in a, came in a, in a, in a custom in case. case. Yeah, part of it is sometimes it's just, you know, timing perspective, yeah, right? Um, some of you guys might not be aware, when we first started this collaboration, we did them at the same time. We were literally designing EVO1 yeah, okay. and yeah. EVO2. So it kind of made sense that we're cross-utilizing something in yeah. that respect, yeah. right? Um, but, you know, for the future, we're always looking at things. That's actually something, if you guys have checked out the Matrix, we are looking at how do we not just even have an amazing card, because the card looks absolutely yeah. stunning, an experience. right? But do we want to evolve it? And it has something that we've done before. If you guys have seen what we've done in the past with cards like uh, the Mars or the Aries series, where we've yeah. done some very cool boxes. Um, yeah. And Asus is kind of also known, I think, for our packaging, right? So, you know, keep it tuned, right? We'll see what's going on. But pretty cool box, guys. Right. And let me know if you want to flip or switch. Do you want me to... Uh, you want me to take off the yeah the we might actually actually that's already coming off yeah. oh it might not even be on both of there there we go okay. so that is one of the cool things shower just shows that these have these really kind of cool open ghoul doors um but they are fully removable so of course uh when you're building the system it just makes it easier you can yeah. take them off you don't have to worry about anything kind of being damaged uh we also have a little bit of kind of a space put in place which also allows for actually airflow i get sometimes questions people going like Oh, there's not airflow on this chassis. This chassis actually has a lot of airflow. Uh, we did a lot of heavy simulation in terms of, not actually just simulation, but actually testing, where if, if you do look at the front of the chassis, well, one of the cool things right there is you see the whole EV design. So there's an internal light panel in here. And so that's one of the really cool things on the Hyperion is that you have that light panel and that will actually be- So it's a little bit different entirely visible. Yeah, it's, it's quite different. Yeah, you don't have the ROG design. 
you actually have the whole mech right yeah. there, right? Which is pretty sweet. Um, but if we bring it over to the front, oh, that's nice, that red, yeah. yeah that's you, cool. you guys can actually see uh, all the open slats right there to bring in all that airflow. You got, of course, all your USB C. That's 20 gigabits, which is actually pretty okay. rare on chassis. Nice. Most chassis are only five or 10 gigabits. So you got actually four type A and then two type C. So that's pretty wild. And Stuart made the point, you totally can't see this, but it is a, a really cool design detail. A look at that beautiful, just that plastic panel right there for the routing. Uh, I love that red. Yeah, it just it, looks really it's slick. Crazy. Yeah. And then back here at the bottom, you do have the integrated, of course, ARGB and fan controller that's built into this unit. So it's pretty cool. A lot of flexibility. The unit does support dual 420 millimeters, but we've, we're not we're only going to be going with just a 360 millimeter AIO. Uh, top panel pops off like there. Pretty easy. So I've gone ahead and removed that for you, Stuart. Can you? I don't think we have the accessories box. Do we? Oh, do we not? I don't know. So, uh, it might be, hopefully, maybe it's in the side compartment. Yeah, that's what I was trying to look through the. But so, I've got my kit of screws, so we do have a backup. Okay. So, yeah, if you guys can see right there, one of the items that we have right here is this cool little panel. And so we can actually slide that. And you'll see right here, you could mount things like your screwdrivers or your uh, accessories or items like that. So that's a kind of cool little uh, little touch there on the Hyperion, right, where you can keep some stuff. Stuart did an amazing mod where you actually took this guy out and you actually uh, put a display there. Yeah, so yeah. I have to give credit where credit is due. I didn't see this, but the gentleman did it before me. So yep. you probably heard of Bro Cooling. Yeah, Bro Cooling. So Bro some Cooling amazing builds. did it before me. I had not seen that video. Yeah. But when I did it, everyone was saying, oh, this, I've never seen this serendipitous. before. So, so I do want to give Bro Cooling credit. He was the first person to do it. But in saying that, I literally put a screen in every second build I do, yeah. whether it's like behind a window, behind a cable grommet hole. I love putting screens in rather than just... Uh, sticking them in a fan spot where it's yep. just the whole screen yep, yep. i like to put them in areas try, where, try to put it where you get a little bit more of a in, natural vibe in. right yeah yeah i can totally dig that so that's going to be uh most of the items there on the hyperion and if you guys can tell right here we've also got our gpu support uh so this is the integrated gpu support that we have right there Let me just see right here. So what questions are we got popping up in the stream is, uh, do you want me to, do you want to lay down or do you want to keep it vertical? We'll keep it vertical for now. That'll be a good spot. If we just slide a bit over, because to put this sure. GSU in, we've got to take this, um, we've got to take that uh, chamber cover off. Yeah. The, sh the, the shroud, right? Yep. 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 So let's see, uh, any other questions we got right here? So we got somebody asking, you know, people are going to ask about the white one. So, yes, uh, if you guys have been watching, uh, of course, our social channels and the PCDIY group, we do actually also have a white version of the Hyperion coming in the not too distant future. Should probably be released in Q4. So just make sure to keep it tuned. We've also actually got some upcoming exciting chassis where we'll have updates to our tough gaming line. We'll have a tough gaming GT302, uh, which for me might be my favorite chassis that we're going to produce all year. It's going to be coming in at a very aggressive price point probably around the $100 MSRP price point. Um, I'm very excited about that chassis. We also have an actually upcoming chassis under the Pro Art line with the PA601 as well. So uh, we're not done. We've got a white version of the Hyperion, GT3, uh, yep, for GT302 and the PA601. Ken Hayes is letting us know is that the built-in fan controller is really convenient. Yep. Um, it's definitely always nice, you know, to just have somewhere where you can route cables so that if you don't want to necessarily go to the motherboard. And, of course, the controller still maps to the motherboard, so you still have your low-level controls that if you don't want to use anything in the software environment, so if you don't want to jump into OS and use Armory Crate, you can still go ahead and do all your controls for fans inside of the UEFI. The one disadvantage that sometimes some people aren't aware of is that if you do want to have more advanced fan control, one benefit of doing it in the operating system is you have something called GPU temp input mapping. So that means essentially we can look at the temperature for the actual graphics card and you can have your fans respond to that. If I want to see the fan controller, because I need to work on this bit. This yeah, 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 no, no problem. Yeah, I, I, is it seven? Seven or eight? Yeah, it's a, it's a very high channel uh, unit.
So Kevin Russell knows is that I prefer the Hyperion over the Helios. That's a tough call. I love both of them. I do really like, though, that kind of distinct design for the Helios. And one of the cool things that I've seen um, is the Helios has so many aftermarket accessories that are available for it, especially from other regions where we've seen them do like custom insert panels, distribution blocks. Although our friends over at EK have also now recently just released a distro yep. for the Hyperion. And there's a couple of other partners that have released them as well. So there's a lot of uh, great options that you can get for both chassis. But uh, the Helios, you can find all kinds of stuff for the Helios. Uh, somebody, uh, Michael's asking us, it looks like a less smoked glass door. Can we order those? No, we don't. Uh, you can't order any of the individual parts specific. So anything you see kind of ID wise has been specific to this generation's collaboration. So that's kind of one of the things with IP collabs is we might tweak little things here and there specific to that IP collaboration. And that's part of kind of the value prop, right? Um, yeah, I mean, for your uh, chassis, right? For the limited edition, right? For the 301, was there anything that was like, what was the specific differences between the mass-produced version? Oh, the for the Lianli, for the uh, chassis. It's, it's just white. Well, yeah, it's just white, white, right? white and silver accents. Yeah, that, white, that and was it. white and that silver was it. accents, but right? In but terms that, of, that's still an example, right? Of that sometimes of these, where the differences. I kind of think, oh, it's hard to say now. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that we would have changed it, but I'll have to check. I don't know. It's, you got to look at it there because if you look at it out here, it yeah, looks much yeah, clearer. Clearer, yeah, 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 yeah. Because of course. Uh, when you put that in front of the black, yeah. the black takes on an additional tint yeah. property, right? All right. Uh, so, uh, Love of X asks, is any shot at getting an EV01 theme stuff again? No. Uh, that is why we talked about, you know, with any of these IP collaborations. Again, you know, right now we've done everything from Call of Duty to EV01, Demon Slayer, right? Uh, the Gundam. I know people, some people still wish they could get the Gundam stuff. That's the thing is that when it's gone, it's gone. So uh, you do want to get it when you get the chance. If you see it, um, I definitely don't ever like to try to pressure anybody in terms of picking up hardware. But, you know, if, quick. If, it, if it's something that you really, really are excited about, um, definitely don't. Because I can tell you we have a huge number of community members that when they miss out on that opportunity, um, they're just like, oh, man, I can't get it anymore. And when we come back to them, we tell them, hey, that's it. It's the limited production run. So let's see what else we got here. Uh, Levax is doing release date. So release date right now, probably what we're going to be looking at is uh, the start of the release. You're going to probably be looking at the August time frame. So probably late August time frame. And we're going to roll that in four waves. So the first actually release uh, based on our last update is probably going to be the graphics card. That would be the very first initial product, followed by some of the core components like the motherboard and the cooler. Uh, the last set of items will be the peripheral based products, but that's going to roll all the way until October. And rest assured, if you guys are following us in terms of our PCDIY group, our social channels, you'll find out about those wave availability notices. Um, there may be certain channel partners, uh, certain e-tailers that might maybe do bundled deals. So you might be kind of watch out for that. You might be able to kind of pick up multiple items in a set together if that's something you're looking for. But we ourselves will not be doing any kind of predetermined bundles. Um, also, for those of you that are in the United States, we will be listing these also available on our ASUS store. So if you do want to purchase them directly from us, you can check out the ASUS store. All right, last cable. One tip I will say with this case is because this PSU shroud goes on, yep, yep, yep. plug in all your cables now. Yep, I would agree so. with that. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, it can definitely vary from some chassis to chassis. But I would generally agree if the shroud is removable, because of course not all chassis have the yeah. shroud is removable. Yeah. Some of them are they slide in, and yeah, they're they're fixed in. Some of the, the lower cost options they could also be riveted in, right? They can vary in terms of their designs, but it just makes it easier from a pathway that if you can get it out of your way, try to get all those cables in first, and you can go ahead and kind of streamline the overall experience. So uh, we got a user asking you for your feedback here. He's saying, so Stuart, how's the case? How, how do you like the Hyperion? Like you noted in the very beginning, it's not, of course, the first time you've worked in it. I know that uh, you've had, you know, some little things that you think you probably would have changed in terms I, of some of the I did review vibe. this case. Yeah, um, and you guys can check it out. It's on his YouTube channel. I had some thoughts and considerations about it. I would say, like, it's different. Like, it's bold going that step further and trying to do something different. It's never easy. Yeah, it's never easy. Like, 
I 100% get the aesthetics. It's pure rog. Yep. A few things I did mention in the video was like having to take this off, the yep. PSU cover, the side, just to get your PSU out. Yeah, just to get so it, yeah. You yep. have to think about it. How many times do you change your PSU? Well, yep. for me, I don't know. Yep. Uh, for most, for most yeah, end for, users, For they most don't know. users, you're probably not going to be doing If something happens to their PSU and they have a custom loop with their GPU yep. mounted on, on the top of this, because that's where this is where the it's gonna vertical rest on bracket the, goes, yep. they have to take their GPU out, which means they have to dismantle their loop to take yep. the PSU out. So it's just one of those yeah. things. It's just one of, exactly. And that's, it's very dependent kind of on the user, right? So different users may never face that issue. And then other yep. users may face that issue, but it's nice to sometimes be able to look at somebody who's got your experience and insight and be able to go, Hey, you know, at least in my configuration, I can see where this could be a pain point or at least something you want to be mindful of. Right. So that as you go into it, that's right. you yeah. know, account for that as, you know, something that it could just be a different build experience for you. Right. Uh, one of the things that I'll say that I definitely love though, about what Stuart did when he did, the, his builds with the Hyperion is that he really accentuated the lines, which I think is one of the strengths of the Hyperion is that it has these long angle kind of swoops, which is kind of like the skeletal frame design that we have, which makes it quite distinct. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. Um, it's got its own it's identity. Got its own vibe, yeah. And I mean, that's for me personally, one of the things that I love about, um, you know, having a purposeful design, right? Sometimes like when you look at some chassis, it's just a square and definitely nothing wrong with that. That can have a very kind of refined, clean, symmetrical vibe to it. Um, but I do like kind of having that purposeful identity that allows you to kind of play with colors in other spaces where I, I think like that, that really beautiful gradient that you did with the pink, the purple, right? That little bit of iridescence. I don't know that it would have come off the same way yeah. on something that would have been like a symmetrical square. Oh, yeah. No, no. You know, just... because you don't have those lines that kind of just help to kind of pull For it me, out, almost pull out the color. I think doing something that looks really good and out there when it's a case like this yeah i find it easier than working on a square box yeah yeah yeah. If, if i want to go out there and think like like could you imagine if you did this eva 2.0 thing yeah on a case that's just square square yeah like it would be hard to get these angles like yeah. just putting your logos and different bits you of don't the, have the, you don't have that yeah, space exactly. to kind of have flexibility and there is something fundamentally almost like the hyperion almost is like purpose built for anime you know yeah, it's exactly, like exactly. if you that's, put this in a backdrop of an anime I feel It'll like blend, it, blend it totally right feels in. like it's supposed to be an anime where if yeah. you would have had like a square box, yeah, that's it'd right. be like, it almost feels out of place, yeah. right? Um, I did forget a cable, the four PSUs. Uh, yep, you don't, did that for the ARGB. Don't forget the ARGB cable. Yeah, so if you guys remember, the Thor does have an integrated wattage display and then it has an ARGB light portion. So that means you can synchronize the lighting with all of the components. But to be able to pass that synchronization, you do have to have a cable that connects from the Thor to the motherboard. Now, if you don't connect that cable, the RGB lighting will work, but it will be static. So we don't want RG it's stuck at RGB, right? Yep, it will be stuck in RGB, yeah, correct. So we obviously don't want that. Yep. So let's go ahead and see. Uh, Michael Braun goes, thanks for that feedback, right? I love the Hyperion case because it's different. I love my case, right? Um, HDO Computer is also giving some love. Uh, Zolmov is asking us, what's the CPU? Uh, this one is a 12900K, but of course, with the Maximus Hero, you could put any of the current and Intel series CPUs in there. So, you know, 12900K, 13700K, 13900K, yeah. whatever works sense. I mean, this is a Maximus board. So, you know, kind of just from like a price perspective, you probably wouldn't be putting even something like a 13600K in there. Yeah, you, uh, you know, you probably would at least be putting a 13700 or 13900 series cpu yeah. in there although 12900k is still a fantastic part and if you can get it at a nice price point i still think it would be a great choice to be able to drop in there um if you want to save some money and be able to you know get something like the eva edition based board i still think that's a totally okay choice uh lava x is noting time to go work some overtime <laughs> to afford this stuff yeah, this is going to be a pretty pricey overall kind of build in terms of the total hardware, especially with that GPU, that GPU yeah. alone. Um, but, you know, one of the things I tell people is, you know, um, that's part of the reason why we try to make the different accessories. So, like, one of the things I loved, I bought for myself in the first collaboration is I got the actual desk mat, the keyboard, and oh, the yeah. mouse just because I absolutely yeah. love that design. And, you know, you could still have that be part of your setup. So you don't necessarily have to go and buy, you know, uh, something like the 4090, right? Like, even the Ryu Jin. I think is a really cool distinct one and you can make this work and i think like a red themed build or black build actually i could even see this in 
uh, like a trimo color vibe where if you have white yeah, with okay. black and some red, yep. I think that could actually look pretty cool because white giving you that kind of pop of contrast, yeah, yep. I think it'd be kind of interesting yeah, too, awesome. right? Awesome. All right. So Pierce Hugh is in. All right. So Cables are out the back so we can go we with can the motherboard. Good. I think yeah. mount the, mount the motherboard, motherboard yep. right? Let's mount the board. So, uh, Jamie notes is that some modders could make changes to this to 90 degrees and make it look like an X-wing. Interesting. That, I could kind of see that. So I think you, you'd almost like you'd have to think about it in different orientation. But since you could play this flat, you'd have to play, I think, with the back because the back is yeah. that glass panel. Yeah. But if you did kind of maybe angle it flat yeah, and kind of play around with it, I definitely think hardline yeah. would work probably better there. So it means light down this way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean... Because the X-Wing, you wouldn't be in that way. So it would be something like that. Yeah. Maybe that could... Yeah, okay. It's, it's kind of... I mean, you know, I that could see work. that. That could be kind of interesting. That's some, that's some good feedback. I don't know. Maybe we'll see that. X, X-Wing X Hyperion Edition, right? <laughs> Is that maybe? So I want to know. We're talking about this awesome Evangelion-based collaboration. But what collab would you guys want to see? I I'm going to give you guys my feedback. Um, I'm a massive okay. tabletop fan. CPU I've been playing uh, tabletop for a long time. And oh, are we all right? CPU popped out. Yeah, the latch is down. Maybe it wasn't fully locked, yeah. locked in there. All right. She's all right, good now. We're, we're all right. We're rocking and rolling. But um, IP collaborations. What would you guys like to see from us? Would you want to see something and uh, another anime? Would you like to see something from games? Would you like to see something from films? Um, you know, from you know a different kind of a literary series. But for me, I would be super juiced at seeing 40k. I want a 40k collaboration. And I want to do chaos, and then I don't know, maybe like Eldar. I think those would be two awesome kind of like contrast-based collabs. Something really kind of spacey and refined with what we do with Eldar, and then go crazy and go to town with uh, you know chaos and uh, that kind of space marine mythos under 40k. Well, let me know what what would you want to see, uh, Stuart? For you, what do you think? Is there an IP uh, that you would be excited about us doing already, a collaboration on? You already asked me this. I. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. I don't really. I don't really follow that many games. I don't really yeah. follow anime. It's like, if people follow my builds, they're not yeah. really. The only thing I've ever done is Cyberpunk. Yeah, I mean, the only yeah, thing yeah. I've ever done. So Cyberpunk would be pretty cool. Yeah. But I mean, I know you play. Some, you play some Overwatch. You play some Blizzard stuff. Would you be interested in seeing like a Blizzard-based collab? I don't like it that much. Okay. Like okay. it's okay. It's just good to fill in time. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think for this collab it's got to be something yeah i don't know okay so let me know what do you guys think what 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 collab would would you guys would like to see uh let's see what we got in terms of some feedback right here hey liquify mods man fantastic to have you here man thanks so much for joining us from the stream So Paskowitz goes, I would love to see something automotive related. So maybe the Formula One inspired. Well, that'd be pretty good. That could be pretty BMW. interesting. I know it's some, some other companies are doing Porsche. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Formula One, definitely. I mean, it's a massive worldwide community. Um, I absolutely love, uh, you know, Drive to Survive, the, the Netflix series. It's a very cool kind of series. That could be very interesting. And uh, there's a lot, I think, of symmetry, right? You talk to a lot of uh, builders and uh, kind of like the care and the layout and the craftsmanship that they consider is very similar to kind of that ethos that a lot of you know car people have yep. right as far as kind of modding tweaking building yep. even the visual elements of what they do with their systems so i could definitely that could be a pretty cool one pretty interesting one oh interesting so we do have uh mods by men joining us on the stream he says he would like to see it with cause uh, it's very interesting that goes into the kind of that urban world kind of the urban graffiti um kind of like pop kind of culture kind of dynamic that could be it would definitely present itself very interesting uh we've done some kind of similar stuff actually on our svg laptop side where we've actually done some great work um and you know of course recently did the uh ape based collaboration for those of you guys that are kind of interested in that vibe so that could be something kind of interesting So uh, LabX was going, will Micro Center have the collab items? Uh, I believe right now we are finalizing our channel partners, but Micro Center is, of course, a fantastic partner with us. 
They do generally carry the majority of our product assortment. Um, so I would expect that they have that, but um, make sure to just keep it tuned to our social channels. In the not too distant future, we'll have confirmation on all of the e-tailers and the partners that will be carrying the uh, EV02 collaboration. So make sure to keep it tuned for that. So uh, I know we talked about the Overwatch on your side. We talked about Blizzard. So somebody says they would like to see a Diablo 4 based IP collaboration. Okay. I could, that could be pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot, of course, different characters. It's a really rich kind of ID world, right, where you got a lot of different textures and design elements. So I could definitely see something like that. I think that would be pretty pretty, pretty interesting, uh, different. So Diablo 4. Hey, Chris Murray. Yeah, thanks for joining us here on the stream. Happy to have you here. So here we go. We got one uh, being at LTX. Somebody goes, well, what about an LTT collab? Um, never say never you know i guess you know the the line is even reach out but uh you know i guess for part of me is like what would that be like right you know like would we have like orange. a like a big beam with like orange or something you know uh would we'd have to maybe enhance one of the chassis to make it like more drop proof yeah right? i was gonna so, say <laughs> this is pretty good though yeah it is it is pretty robust um but you know that would be kind of interesting um you know i don't know that we've done any active collaborations with somebody like that um but ltt has had a little bit of a collaboration history with some people, you know, they did some stuff with Noctua. So, you know, you maybe never know, right? If you could see something in the future with Asus and LTT in that way. Uh, Daniel notes is, it goes, I would like to know if the case will be available at Best Buy. So um, generally Best Buy is always a little bit of a trickier in terms of a, a channel partner, in terms of availability, because uh, you have what's called Best Buy like online, and Best Buy yeah. brick and mortar. And so one of the challenges like brick and mortar usually requires um, a very kind of deep forecast. So that just means that kind of, we have to like be working with them literally like sometimes like six or eight months ahead of time to try to get it slotted to be a physical item in a store. So a lot of times that's generally not possible. Um, so you might see like an online assortment of items that we might have at Best Buy. Um, so as always, like I said, for any of the availability, just make sure to keep it tuned and we'll definitely let you know in terms of who the channel partners will be uh, for the wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four releases. But you should probably pretty much see that it'll be parity across all the components when we release them as far as who will have them be available. Daniel notes says, will there only be one color? Yes, um, because this is of course themed. EVO2 is a specific character for Evangelion. This is the color for her character, for her mech. So this is very much be in alignment for that. Um, just like an EVO1, which was our prior collaboration, kind of the primary colors there you had were, you know, the black, the purple, and the green, right? That neon green. So it's the same thing, right? Those are the specific colors. Now, of course, we do have the Hyperion if you did want to get the chassis by itself, which is just default already in kind of black, or you can get it in the white version, right? So we will have a white version. And the other components, similarly, we have those in kind of the standard ROG colorways, uh, which for pretty much, I think, all the products we're talking about are, are going to be all like, you know, black and silver. Yeah. Right. Oh, hey, Erica. Fantastic. Happy to have you joining the stream. Thank you so much. So Chris Murray, uh, Chris Murray, he'd like to see a Battlefield 2042 collaboration. Interesting. Call okay. of Duty, I mean, Call of Duty, absolutely one of the biggest um you know, uh, excuse me, well, Battlefield, as well as Call of Duty, some of the actual biggest IPs out there in terms of the gaming yeah. world. Now, if you didn't know, our first actual collaboration was actually Call of Duty Black Ops. Yeah, some yeah, people okay. actually forget about that. We yep. did it across actually motherboards. We did it even on the router. We actually had an entire collaboration. And so we have shifted over. We haven't gone back to necessarily an immediate game franchise. So it would be interesting to see, do we go back and visit that? You know, I mean, definitely esports is at its core in terms of just popularity is just massive, you know? Um, I would love to see, what do you guys think? I mean, if we probably talk, you know, top ranking, I mean, definitely Battlefield, Call of Duty, Valorant, you got Apex. Fortnite, of course, continues to be an absolute juggernaut. So, you know, would you want to see a Fortnite collab? I don't know, pretty interesting stuff. Ooh, now Scott is talking my language here. Scott is letting us know um, Batman. So we did do an actual Batman edition ROG phone. I absolutely love that thing. It looks super sick. Um, so does that lay for the foundation? 
hey, do we got a, D, was- a DC ROG collab? That would be sick. I would absolutely love to see something. I was going to say, this already looks like the Flash. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and you got so many characters, right? Like, where do you even go? You know, is it, is it cool, Superman, like, Flash, Batman? Yeah. I mean, the, just the and black and the. It could be kind of exciting because maybe we bring even more of the product portfolio, right? Like, Batman, I almost feel is Batman maybe more like tough gaming, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right? And then maybe do you have something like the Flash be like ROG, right? Like, yep. you know. You could play around with stuff, right? Uh, personally, for me, I'm a huge Superman fan, so you know I'd love to maybe see something there. But yeah, DC, that would be a pretty exciting IP collaboration. So uh, we got somebody asking us here a little bit more of a technical question. So let me go ahead and jump into it. Hi, JJ Inc. and Stuart. Uh, for the ROG Z690 Extreme motherboard. Will it support G Skill 7200 MT DDR5 memory, or is that just for the Z790 chipset? So, I've actually talked about this a little bit in the PCDIY group. I have actually a featured post that's called DDR5 Insights, and it helps you to understand a little bit about what's called DDR5 memory scaling. So, when you talk about the actual scaling of memory, it's influenced not only by the CPU, but by the actual uh, the memory controller inside the CPU, but also by the motherboard. Now, one of the big benefits that we did when we moved over from Z690 to Z790 is we optimized and improved what's called the trace design. And this enhanced overall signaling performance, which meant that we were able to get a few extra 100 megahertz out of the platform. So if you took the same CPU from Z690 and you ran it on Z790, you'd actually generally be able to see a higher frequency skidding. Now for 7200, it is potentially possible in Z690, but I would say especially um, Compared to a Z790 based board, even if we're not talking about the extreme, but like the hero, it would be a little more likely. A Z690 with a 12th gen series CPU, generally we're seeing more likelihood between about 6,000 to 6,600 MT. And then when you went to 13th gen and 13, uh, 13th gen and Z790, you could really be talking about seeing much more consistent frequencies of 68 to probably 70, 7,600 MT. So. There's a possibility. Uh, The last point that I'll note there is that for 7200, regardless of whether you're talking Z690 or Z790, you are gonna be looking at single rank configurations. So that means that you're gonna be talking about a maximum of 32 gigabytes, two DIMM configurations. So I have been able to, for sure, hit 7,000 on Z690, excuse me, Z690 with 13th gen. Uh, But definitely as you start to get to that 7200, there's definitely a bit more of a cutoff in terms of probably having a much lower level success. Could be possible, but you'd have to have a very, very good IMC. And even the margin of the motherboard would have to be a, a little bit more on that positive side. So hopefully that answers your question. And again, if you got more questions on that, check out our DDR5 live stream and our DDR5 Insights posts inside of our PCDIY group. Um, so let's see here. So. Uh, Daniel, thanks for joining us the stream here. I said, hey, JJ, will there be any, any, any more EVA collabs in the near future? Let's say with um, zero, 00, or is this the end of the collab for now? So, yeah, so we had 01, we have 02, right? And are we going to maybe do another? Um, it's really actually dependent on you guys, right? The more successful these collaborations are, um, the more opportunity allows us to go back to the IP holders, right? And be able to say, look, the community is absolutely loving these things. You know, let's go back and give them another wave, right? So um, I would definitely tell you guys, if it's something you want to see, let us know. You know, drop those comments on our social uh, feeds, right? Drop them on, what, it's not Twitter, uh, drop it on X, drop it on Instagram, yeah. drop it on our, you know, email, drop it in our PCDR group. Let us know what you want to see because that allows us to go back to these IP people and, and talk to them and say, hey, we'd love to be able to go ahead and do something else when it comes to an IP collaboration. Uh, Anthony's asking, sorry, this has been asked, but is there a release window? Yes. So release window, we're going to be looking for somewhere kind of uh, late August to all the way to October because we're going to have four waves in terms of the product releases. So that will account from everything from the Hyperion to, of course, the Ryu Jin to the actual cooler to the motherboard uh, to the peripherals. They will all be coming out as we move all the way until October. So the first product launch will be for the actual 4090. So let me go ahead and grab that guy again because... <laughs> It's an absolutely beastly graphics card. Look at that guy. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, I think that the job that we did here on the IP Collab, it looks great. Uh, of course, this is the vertical base mount design, but I think even if you go for that 
horizontal base mount. It's got a really, really beautiful, clean kind of red aesthetic with that black. And then you get to see all that beautiful work that we did on that uh, back plate where we've got even that milled design with the RG logo. Of course, got the character, all of it on there. You've got the quad LED lighting zone on this card, which is pretty sweet. And you still even have cool little things. Like one thing, did you guys know on RG Strix cards, you get these two fan connect headers. So these are two headers that when you install the graphics card, if you want to connect your fans to this header, that will allow you to actually have the fans respond to the GPU temperature as opposed to responding to the temperature for the CPU. So it's a uh, cool feature that we have exclusive to our ROG Strix series of graphics cards, but absolutely massive card. It's not even the biggest 4090 that we have. Uh, the biggest uh, card actually in our lineup is going to be our Noctua, which comes in at 4.3 slots. Uh, but we have also released a new 4090 with our Tough Gaming OG, which is only 3.2 slots. So if you have been looking for a 4090 that is a bit more compact, we got you covered as well. So uh, Facebook user lets us know is I got DDR7800. That's right, 7800 MT, um, 7800 to 76 stable on my Extreme Z790 13980K. Very happy with my results. That would be, like I said, uh, reasonable, uh, as I was talking about, right? Z790 with 13th gen has even a much more performant memory controller. It allows for more consistent scaling. We generally find that over 90% of CPUs will generally be able to hit somewhere between 6,800 to 7,000 plus, and then a very high percentage will be in that category between 7,000 to about 76. So you probably even have a little bit of a better margin in terms of your CPU if you've been able to get to that 76 to that 7,800. So Circuit Rewind is letting us know, I want to see ITX, but I also want to still have it see onboard audio. That's a really challenging one. So most of the time on Mini ITX, um, we do have the integrated audio. Now I know actually our friends that were uh, over at PC World, we're actually using their actually setup right here. Um, Adam actually recently from PC World did a very cool Mini ITX based build um, based on the AM5 platform with our X670 E-I series motherboard. But one of the things that you have to realize is there's literally two chipsets, right? Most motherboards, you have just one chipset on the motherboard. But on that mini ITX board, it having two chipsets literally meant that we didn't have room for the integrated audio chip. So we actually had to remove it outboard to a new solution that we call the ROG Hive. So it all ultimately comes down to that, you know, you're, you deal with a lot of space constraints on a motherboard. Just like on an ATX motherboard, which we've gone ahead and already installed the Maximus Hero in here, you've got more room. So having more room means we can do more things like we can put an ES Saber, an ESS Saber DAC and AMP directly on the motherboard, have more audio grade capacitors and just you've got more flexibility. So that is always kind of the, the challenge, right? When you go with small form factor, you're gonna be uh, hurting for space. And it's always a challenge in terms of just how much we can fit on there. So still right here is getting ready. It looks like you're- yeah, I just wanna mention this bracket is yep. really handy. Yep. Because as you can see, I tried to fit this to say this uh, rad mount, 420, 360, we're going yep. 360. Say this was fixed in the top. It's actually very hard. I yep. actually can't get that angle with yep. that motherboard in there to get this in. So what I can do is there's one screw, pop this out by the latch. I can put this on outside. Yep. And now I can just drop it in. So yeah, so it just I'll helps to streamline on. the build experience. But one thing I actually want to show right there oh, before yeah, you do that is uh, as far as I know, we're the first manufacturer and the only manufacturer to do this, but uh, we actually have this really doesn't. cool, yeah, we have actually a protection mechanism. So it's a small, just plastic insert that we put on our radiator. Cause I'm sure Stuart, you've had this, I've had this happen. You get you your AIO. You drop anything, a little yeah. screwdriver, a little screw anything. And, and you just, nick the fins, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It just looks, it, it looks, doesn't look good. Yeah. It's not gonna affect the cooling unless you completely damage it. Yeah, yeah. Unless you, I mean, unless you know, you ran like something yeah. like super coarse, you're, you know, having a couple of, de of, of, you know, dents in the fins, like you said, it's not going to have a performance issue. And a lot of time easily, you can go in with a nice flat head or maybe, you know, like a, like a small rigid, you know, uh, uh, ruler or something like that. And you can straighten it out. So it's not an issue. Right. But I felt this was a nice touch, especially when nice. you're buying something this expensive. It's just nice to know, hey, you can feel that. And it comes on both sides because yep. we've already pre-mounted the fans. Yeah, exactly. So you do get it on both sides. And I will also make a note here for the Ryujin. Three, this is our new flagship oh, yeah. AIO. This is the new 
uh, featuring the 8th gen Asa Tech Face pump design. So it's got a 3.5 inch display, 60 hertz. It has more onboard memory. The tubes are longer from 380 millimeter to uh, 400 millimeter. This is still a magnetic housing, which is really nice because you can actually go vertical or horizontal. Oh, okay. So you can actually change the orientation. So some people prefer to have it like square. Yeah, and then boy, some people actually it, prefer to go like kind of that vertical. Yeah. And that just depends on the look and feel that you want. Um, this also does make it a little bit easier that when you do want to clean the inside, yeah. you can clean this. So the fan for this generation, we've made it much larger. So this even has a ring barrier, improved static pressure and performance. So it actually provides quite a bit of airflow to the surrounding VRM and to the uh, CPU components. You have a larger cold plate. So this cold plate just means that it's broader coverage, right? So that's especially really beneficial for the new AM5 and the new Intel CPUs because the CPUs got bigger. So you just want more coverage for that surface area, right? Uh, in addition to that, these are our new magnetic daisy chain fans. Yeah, so, I was just flying around with that. Yeah, we can't show you because we've already gone ahead and connect them, but they would normally connect together. But you can see right there, really cool design right here. Where there's, where there's a nice adhesion, so really? you don't have to worry about it kind of just like no, no, coming off. Definitely not coming. And it is keyed, so yeah. we'll try the other way. Yep. Yeah. So it is keyed. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. There we go. And so you can see right there. And so it's really nice because you have one cable that handles the ARGB and the fan. And you do get that on both sides. So on one end or the other. And so whatever works best for you from a cable routing exactly. standpoint, you're good to go. So you don't have any of those cables in between here. No. Just go ahead and super easy. So yeah. I can plug this. I'm gonna plug this into the built-in yep. the fan hub, built in header. hub straight in, and that's it. Good to go. Yep. And I just need to plug this into the motherboard header. And that, that's it. So a really simple and actually really nice clean layout. These also have been optimized. These have our new ring barrier based design. So actually, normally with a lot of times on our ARGB fans, you do get usually a reduction in airflow and in static pressure performance. But these are quite competitive in terms of offering very, very good performance. Uh, for an ARGB based fan. So really cool design. This is also on our standard Ryu Jin. So if you want the Ryu Jin in white or in black, it's not just the EVA edition. They all have that magnetic daisy chain design. And for those guys that don't want any RGB, we still have even the Noctua based model. So if you want to go with the Noctua edition, uh, you don't get all the magnetic daisy chain stuff, but you get those premium great Noctua based fans. So uh, let's go ahead and mount this guy in there. Yeah, perfect. Take this off. Don't want to forget this. Yep. yep. So let me go ahead and see right here what we got in terms of any other questions. So LaVex is going any sh any shot of uh, doing X670E AMD with these collabs? Of course. I mean, uh, we actually did do for the Gundam collab, we did have an, in, uh, an AMD and an Intel-based solution. Um, just for this generation, we went ahead and we did it with Intel, right, as far as the platform. Uh, but it doesn't mean that for future collaborations, you can't see it on AMD. Uh, Asus, you know, we are the world's largest motherboard manufacturer and we're a leading component manufacturer across all these spaces. Uh, we love both Intel and AMD. Uh, we're a primary board partner for both of them. So uh, definitely no qualms about wanting to support that. It just comes down again to like the, the timing, you know, and everything yeah. uh, that we have to work in terms of the development cycle. Keep in mind, again, we started this actually initial talks all the way back in 2020, which that's, predates the... That's a like two three generations yeah ago. yeah exactly well you know am5 wasn't even yeah. on the table right we were in key am4 you know country right so just goes to shows you um so woos actually asked a good question they're asking us so no monitor and headset this time around that's correct i did absolutely love that we had the delta and the evo one collab but there is no headset for this generation and the monitor um, actually for North America, you may find it in other regions, but for North America, we will not have the EVO2 uh, collaboration monitor. We will have still have, we, we still do have some inventory of the EVO1, uh, so EVO1 uh, collab monitor, so that will still be available. Uh, but if you guys are super passionate about it, uh, I guess you can consider importing, although I generally don't recommend that because pricing oftentimes can be higher because you're getting people kind of reselling the product. Um, you also do have to consider warranty limitations yep. because you're buying a product from another region and the serial numbers are designed for the warranty for that respective region. Uh, I know you probably as a modder, a builder, you've sometimes been in that spot where you've got stuff from other parts well, of the world. It comes from everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, but, you know, you then maybe go to look at the warranty availability and it's non-existent because it was, you know, from Germany or Japan or China yeah, or something, right? right? That's right. Yeah. 
All right, so I've just left these a little bit loose on this bracket because once yep. we get it in, we might want to fine tune yeah, it you wanna, left or right. Yeah, and so that's actually a really great point um, is that sometimes you do want to have a little bit of that slack for just positioning. So some, You could probably just nip one up a little bit if you're afraid of it sliding. It's just yep. so you don't, don't crank them all. Yep. And then you put it in or it doesn't want to sit down. Yep. It's hitting like the top corner or you something. You need to just adjust. And that's a really good pro tip that really only after you've built a lot of time, you realize just having sometimes that's like literally one, two millimeters can make or break yep. that difference of just giving you that right kind of lineup. So fantastic tip there, Stuart. All right. Oh, Janny asking about, oh, can, can we get it? Can we get it? Travis, maybe, dude, is the, is the, can the Matrix, somebody wants to see the Matrix. Let's see it here. I, we do have the Matrix here. It is coming. If you guys have not heard about the Matrix, the Matrix is a reintroduction of the quintessential flagship. So historically, we have offered ROG Strix, Tough Gaming, you know, dual series, not two a series. We have a really deep lineup, but uh, we haven't Ooh. offered a Matrix graphics card for some time. And we recently made an amazing announcement for the Matrix. Now, this is all about the EVO2 collab, but this would be an amazing graphics card to put in this build as well. This is going to be the end-all, be-all. If you are absolutely looking for the fastest 4090 on the market that also features liquid metal, all right, a new yep. custom, even larger uh, cold plate to be able to cool this guy, it's going to be an absolute beast. It also has those daisy chain magnetic and fans. Thicker rad. This is yeah. about 40. Yeah, it's a, thick, a thicker radiator. So, yeah, I mean, this thing is absolutely going to be a monster in terms of performance. Like, we were talking about Batman before, and when you look yeah. at this, this it, it like, does It does got that, some Batman, it does got some Batman like vibes. Dark there and yeah. The gray. And uh, this just beautiful all die cast, right? And then you've got this beautiful halo frame that's on this unit that will be this. illuminated. Uh, it's an absolutely... Yeah, I mean, difference. yeah, you can see the size and the tubing. The tubing so much thicker um, because we really want an ultra high level of performance. We haven't finalized clocks, but I can tell you already in some early testing under air cooling, under air cooling, uh, you know, tweaking the fan controller. I've already seen this doing over 3.1 gigahertz yeah, GPU clocks. Consider that this Standard. card, this is already pretty much the fastest 49 yeah. you can get. We have a higher TGP level. It's already factory overclocked. And it has a custom milled vapor chamber thermal solution. Absolutely monstrous thermal solution. This car does generally around in the 2800s in terms yeah, of the frequency, right? Now, of course, you can overclock this, and there are some people that can get close to the three gigahertz. But with this card, we are bidding the GPUs for the absolute best. cream of the crop, the best of the best. This card is going to be uh, breaking easily that three gigahertz yes. clock frequency barrier. And I'm just so. thinking, like, you're going to have to vertically mount this, but it's so heavy. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful. I mean, that I still really is, think the aesthetic looks beautiful, really I haven't refined. Seen this on, is there any lighting? Yeah, yeah. So there's lighting all through here, soft promoter inlet. Oh, it looks almost good. looks recessed where you yeah. don't see any visible yeah. LEDs. It's got a really beautiful look to it. So we don't have yet a specific release date for you guys. Um, probably going to be coming uh, in the not too distant future. Right now, just finalizing. This is not even an MP sample. The final sample will even have a little bit more fit and finish to it. We're just nice. making some final tweaks to it. Um, but we're very excited about it. It will be an ultra limited, not just a limited, ultra. but an ultra limited production run. So if you are interested in getting the Matrix, uh, you're definitely going to want to be quick. Be quick. You're quicker than this. Quick. Quicker than this. Yeah, quick, even quicker, quicker than the Evangelion. Even quicker than the Evangelion. Wow. So there you guys go. We got the, the Matrix. I just want to move this so we don't knock it. Uh, Astral Computers showing some love, saying that the Matrix GPU is beautiful. I agree. I think... We did an amazing job on the ID design. I think it just, it showed kind of that next level kind of refinement that really is something that we love about showing like on the high end. Like to me, that board, if you pair it with the Hero in just its normal configuration, yeah. not the EVO edition, you can see how they just beautifully look just together, right? Just those IDs just really complement each other, the fit and the finish. A show computer says, I want to take it apart and add, you know, a G1 quarter thread, right? But I won't. Yeah, right? I was looking at that just yeah. then. I'm kind of thinking that. Yeah, so how much I can do you tell destroy you, to, to, yeah, to get it out? I can tell you guys part of the reason why we didn't do that is, you know, some of the water cooling enthusiasts, and I'm sure, Stuart, you can speak to this. Um, we didn't want to go that direction because yeah. we wanted it to be as streamlined, as simple as possible. And an ultra premium product, we didn't want you to have to have any possible kind of points of failures or issues. Yeah. The other kind of issue that you do see within the community is there's a lot of different types of coolants that are out there 
people have dyes, they have additives, colors, and you can get things like settling. And people get worried about kind of staining the blocks. Can you clean the blocks easily? And remember that that block, it's a custom designed yeah. block. And we also have that liquid metal application, yeah. right? And so ultimately to just be able to ensure the best experience possible, we just went with it. a fully self-contained design, right? Now that doesn't mean in the future, maybe you might not see like a reintroduction of something like our Poseidon oh. series, which the yep. Poseidon was a hybrid. It allowed you to have an air cool design and it actually had normal fittings to integrate into a normal loop, yeah. right? But I would still be a little bit concerned because like I said, uh, you know, with so many different types of cooling permutations and solutions, and I see, you know, people in the community go like, oh, I, I put this in there, it's six months down the road. You know, they've got settlement back, issues. Back when you had the Poseidon, was, was there even solid coolants back then? I don't yeah. even remember. Like yeah, back then, you didn't have all the fancy stuff. So yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was much more common to really see what we saw. Most people do is usually they were just doing, you know, like distilled, with maybe yeah. a little bit of a growth inhibitor, clear coolants, or they would have minimal dye. Right? It's just like a just a little drop of a dye or something like that, and that was it. So you didn't really have as much concern. But I think now uh, there's definitely a bit more concern, right? And that's not to say that. You know, the water cooling manufacturers, they're not consistently trying to work at improving. Oh, it's just hard. You know, but it is difficult and it's hard with so many permutations, so many different types of builds. It, it can be challenging to kind of find that out. Um, personally, for me, that's why in my personal builds, I tend to run generally a clear coolant. Yeah. And then if I really want to touch a color, a um, I will just maybe just a little bit of dye and that's it. That's all yeah. I'm going to add to my build. So like my primary liquid cool build, it is. It's just a clear coolant and I just add a little bit of dye and that's it. Facebook user saying hello, Stuart. Says thanks for joining us here on the stream. Who was that? Uh, somebody just saying hi. Well, good day. Thank you. Uh, I like this. Somebody noting my body is ready for the matrix. So they are juiced. They're getting ready there. So I think somebody asking also, why didn't we do maybe like a 420 millimeter radiator on the matrix? And part of that came down to optimal compatibility. So if we really think about it, um, 420 millimeter radius support is still actually somewhat of a rarity in most chassis on the market. Um, it's become a bit more popular over the last couple of years, but in reality, it's pretty common to now find most performance oriented chassis, not only in the kind of the mid range, of course, in the enthusiast range, that can give you 360 millimeter radiator support. But going with 420 would really exclude actually the vast majority of users and giving them the ability and to kind of be able to put in that. Like this case is designed for 420, but you don't want to make it look like if you get that card, yep. you got to make people buy this chassis. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so we our, our goal was it made more sense than something like our LC models, which our LC models are not even 360. We even further optimized there where we only do a 240 millimeter radiator, right? Um, because that gives you the broadest level of compatibility. So there, we still kind of upgraded it, right? Because we wanted to even give you better thermal performance, but we didn't want to sacrifice overall users that go, hey, my chassis, you know, I just yes. don't have 420 millimeter support, right? So somebody says, it looks like it's starting to come together. Yeah, I mean, we're getting there, right? Well, so far we've got in the Hyperion, of course. We got the Thor already in there as well. We got the Maximus Hero in there, and we got the Ryogen 3. Our memory's been installed, and our M.2 SSD has been installed. So, you know, we're probably about 65% the way so, there. Yeah. So, so far, actually, things have been going pretty smoothly. Um, no issues, but again, you know, Stuart's a master class builder, so yeah. this, is not, this is not breaking a sweat here. You know, no, we got no bends, no Nothing. tubing, <laughs> no pumps, no distros, right? So it's a far simpler process. Um, so overall... Pretty cool. It's starting to come together here. So, oh, hey, Lan OC, man. Thanks for joining us here on the stream. Fantastic to have you here. Let's see. Uh, so the EVO2 hardware looks great. Have fun at the event, man. Thank you so much. Fantastic to have you in the stream. So, again, for those of you that might just be joining us right now, what we are doing is this is a live build of the latest IP collaboration between ASUS and ROG uh, Evangelion. So this is our Wave 2 IP release in this awesome colorway for Oscar. Um, I think it absolutely looks stunning with this red, orange, and green. It really, really has a bold, dynamic flair to it. So if you're definitely an anime fan, or even if you're just looking for something different, unquestionably, 
I don't think there's any other component on the market right now that has a kind of this type of color yeah, scheme. I don't think so. Um, so even if you aren't an anime fan, but you just want something that looks really different, uh, this is 100% going to be a fantastic to be able to have something that is super limited. And on top of that, um, it won't be available again. So once it is sold out, uh, you not only have something that looks super distinct, but it's also, like I said, it's something that only a very few number of people are going to have available. I can't give you, um, uh, of course, full quantity numbers, guys, but I can let you know this is definitely a limited release across all of the components that we will have available for the Evangelion-based release. So, oh, oh, there we got We got our, our Daisy Chain Magnetic they Connector. I must give you two sets because yep. this one doesn't work on one side. Yep. So the yep. yeah, magnetic so the, is yeah, the opposite. So. Yeah, there is two sets. And so what Stuart is showing you guys here is that there's actually that cable that we talked about again for that Ryujin, uh, that allows you to have your power for both the ARGB yeah. and for the fans. So again, it just simplifies the overall cable riding experience, but you do want to make sure you're utilizing So the I had it on this end. Yep. And it's not going to reach down this far back corner okay. where our fan and hub is. So I'm going to so install you're switch it, it to the other on side. this end. Just need to spin this around so I can see. So one thing too that's also nice that I do like about our Hyperion, and we also have it on the GT502, we also have it on the Helios, is this kind of handle design. Because uh, I'll tell you guys, and Stuart, I think, can kind of speak to this. Uh, when you got a really big build yeah. and you start getting into that, you know, uh, 20, 30, 40 pound <laughs> plus category, it is an absolute bear to try to lift from the yes. base, which you really actually don't want to do. You could actually legitimately hurt yourself. So having actually this handles can make it easier to sometimes just be able to lift and move it uh, a bit more easily. So they do not only add like a cool aesthetic, but they do have a functional aspect to it, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's see. Uh, we'll go going here. Um, what would be the total cost of this build estimated? Um, I'll actually have to get back to you guys on that one uh, just because uh, we haven't 100% finalized the MSRP pricing. There is a little bit of a price delta difference between the standard version hardware and the EVA edition based hardware. So if we take a look like at the Maximus Hero compared to the Maximus Hero EVA edition, it will carry a little bit of a price premium. Um, so ultimately, the easiest way to kind of look at it is if you kind of look at all the hardware, you would just want to pump it up a little bit. Um, but definitely we'll have pricing and information available in the not too distant future. So make sure to just keep it tuned to our social channels uh, to be able to get all that points. Yeah, so somebody goes, looks pretty simple thanks to the space of the case. I mean, that is definitely the case. Um, <laughs> not to have a pun there, right? But working within a bigger chassis it's nice because you do have more room right you're not kind of constricted right you just have a little bit more flexibility to kind of be able to put your hands there uh, both i think Stuart and myself we're taller guys uh, we have you know bigger hands i like having a little bit more space to be able to move around with but i do always to make a comment you know to a lot of the great builders and modders that post in our like take for instance our pcdoi group that having also a bigger chassis especially if you even go bigger than this and even in you know the chassis that you collaborated with the anley it's a bit of a double-edged sword because the more space you have, the more that you can have negative space. Yes. And actually having negative space can feel really weird because if you don't fill it out and lay it out correctly, it just ends up looking empty. And I have seen builders do this where they buy a really big chassis and uh, they go with a build and a configuration that probably should really been in a chassis, you know, a size down, right? And that's kind of a really balancing act that if you start to go with a build, a bigger chassis, you do want to try to make sure that the hardware kind of complements the build and the layout is accounting for the size because if you don't kind of balance it out across that space, you can't kind of yeah, just em right. empty out with like these big holes, right? I mean, is that is that how you feel, Stuart? Yeah, so the V3000, I ended up doing three builds in that. I had yep. two that were beautifully spaced out. Everything just went in perfectly. And then the one in my white yeah. was like the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah. It looked like it could have gone in an, in an M. The amount of hardware it could have gone in an M80X. It, it could have gone but in a smaller build, right? I wanted to do some contrast between yep. just the options. I wanted one that was very minimal Middle. inside. And then the other ones, I wanted to fit as much stuff in. Right, right. Really I show could. off like exactly. the room that you have, right? Because that's the whole point, right? If you can fit rads everywhere, yep. you want to kind of show off those rads. Yeah, but exactly. that's also the other thing is that a lot of guys forget when they go about that building process and sometimes those bigger chassis, uh, they are gonna ratchet up your build budget quite a bit because all oh, of a yeah. sudden, if you didn't account for 
man, I need three radiators, right? I need more tubing. I need more fittings. I might need, need you know, two pumps and reses, yeah. right? Uh, you, you didn't even talk about the core hardware there. That's just, you yes. know, some of the supplemental water cooling stuff, right? So uh, let's go ahead and quickly, quickly take a little bit of a it's look here. Oh, 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 yeah, the, the crowning this moment. The... Yeah, yeah, go ahead and put, pop it on there. Actually, we got to work out this USB. So we can see right there, uh, he's just routing through there. And you guys can actually see the really cool, uh, let me see if we see the angle there. Let's go ahead and tilt it just a little bit. There we go. Yeah. So you guys can now see we went ahead and we put the pump cover on there. But it is a magnetic pump cover, so you can go ahead and remove it. So you have access to the VRM assist fan if you wanted to clean it. But you can also uh, adjust this orientation if you want to. So you can go vertical or horizontal. But it is going to be pretty sweet right there. So we got the Ryogen. It fits really nicely in there. Yeah, it's perfectly. I mean, that's giving me the vibes, man. That's giving me the vibes. Oh, just that beautiful orange right there with that accent where you see just a little bit of the, the orange right here. The orange popping right here. Now, this whole light panel will also light up and have its animations. This will have its animations. You'll have the orange right here. Right now, I'm just absolutely loving the way this is coming together. And these I mean, tubes a little bit hanging down. In yeah, front yeah. Of and uh, you guys can start to envision, right? We're getting there. We are going to go horizontal, right? But uh, Hyperion does allow for this to be mounted vertical. And I, I do agree with Stuart, right? Especially, I love this just orange accent right here with the green, where that could pop really, really nicely. Uh, of course, one of the challenges also with a vertical mount is you start to obstruct some of your your access to your I.O. or some of those M.2. Or take, for instance, like this M.2, you would entirely block that off. And so those are things you always want to keep in mind that if you're going between like a horizontal or vertical mount, right, how is that going to affect the build experience? Are you going to have accessibility to things like certain slots? Um, you also do have challenges. Some people don't talk about it, but when you do use riser cables, different riser cables have varying performance when it comes to emi or electromagnetic interference some cables are better than other in that respect and you can have like signal dropouts or signal inconsistencies so i do always recommend that if you are considering a uh, riser cable try to get one from a good quality manufacturer where they do uh, state that they've tested for emi because if not you can sometimes run into some issues but overall coming together some people might be also wondering what happened to the side panel do remember that the uh that the Hyperion does have these beautiful kind of winged gold doors, right? So we did go ahead and remove those. Those are gonna go ahead and pop back on because we can go ahead and just drop them back on and then they pop back into place. So we have just gone ahead and removed those to make the build process a little bit easier. So while Stuart's working on some of the cable management there, I think I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the peripherals because the peripherals look pretty sweet here. I'm gonna go ahead and take out our keyboard and mouse. Let's just see if I'm in. Yeah, I'm in frame there. So yep. uh, the first one is going to be our RG Strict Scope RX. So this is also going to be the limited edition uh, keyboard that will come with it. So this does use our RX-based switches, which if you guys haven't heard of them, these are optical-based switches. But one of the things I absolutely love about these switches is compared to a traditional stem-based switch, uh, there's very little keycap wobble. They have outstanding what's called force deviation. So it doesn't matter whether you kind of hit it here at the top, at the bottom, or right in the middle. It's super consistent and smooth. They just feel really, really, really nice. They have a nice bounce back right there. Uh, we actually have this really beautiful X stabilizer built into the switch. So traditionally you see much more of a kind of just standard spring handling everything, but there's this really nice stabilizer that goes like this that allows for really that nice, smooth and consistent experience. And the other thing that I really love about those RX switches is that four point stem, if I remove that, that's what actually allows for that really nice, smooth, consistent experience. We also have a centrally mounted LED design. So most of the time, when you talk about LEDs, you have what's called a north facing or south facing LED, which means that the RGB lighting isn't necessarily fully balanced. So this lighting is actually really, really nicely symmetrical. So from the top to the side to the bottom, you get a really nice kind of fill of lighting that looks really great. Uh, this keyboard is also IPX rated. You can literally spill oh, water nice. on this and it wouldn't matter. You don't have to worry about like dust, debris, dander. I've got three dogs. Let me know. Are you in, uh, you know, hashtag pet household? Yep. <laughs> right. Um, you, you do sometimes have to worry about you have those cats that lay on the keyboard. You know, you get dust. 
you maybe spill something on here, you can literally just put this in a bucket of water, clean it off if you wanted to, and it still entirely works. Most mechanical keyboards, that's 100% no way anything you would want to do. You would damage the whole PCB, you yeah. damage your switches, but these are fully sealed, so it makes for a great design. Really, really nice, soft, malleable cable. And then you also have a USB pass-through. I love the USB pass-through. Why? Because if I've got something like a Gladius or a wireless headset, wireless, yeah. yeah, you know, all I need to do is I can just put the wireless adapter right there in that USB port. So instead of having to kind of run it to the back or do something else, it just makes it really convenient, you know? And of course you got your Ergo feet. So really, really nice option. This keyboard's only a hundred bucks really? normally. So uh, I think a really, really nice value. Um, but I think this looks awesome if you guys want to pick up this keyboard under the Evangelion base build. Check this one out. On the Gladius 3 right here, this is one of my favorite mice right here. This is the aim point. So this is our newest generation. It has an outstanding um, RG aim point sensor, 36,000 DPI. We're also one of the only manufacturers that guarantees 1% CPI deviation, which is outstanding accuracy. It is going to be a tripe mode mouse, which means you get USB-C with our ultra light RG paracord cable. It has Bluetooth and it also has 2.4 gigahertz wireless. Uh, in addition to that, it's got a really nice ergonomic design, outstanding battery life, really nice, clean, crispy, consistent switches. And in terms of the switches, do I actually have the little, I might have it here. Uh, let me see if I can do this. So you can do this on the fly. Do you Which have a smaller do? precision? Yeah, I might be able to do that with this. Oh, sorry, right there. So one of the really cool features on ROG Mice, and uh, this is exclusive to ROG Mice. So it means if you've got Razer, Logitech, Steel Series, uh, doesn't matter. Nobody else has this. Where we have a really cool ability, where if you want to customize your switches, you can do that. So normally to customize your switches, well, they're under the feet. Yeah, you would actually have to. Uh, you, the feet. Yeah. Well, as soon as you damage your foot, foot. On, on, on a mouse, it's endlessly rubbing on your mouse pad. Yeah, yep. Um, so one, you have to rip that off. The mouse might not even be designed to be, it might not be designed to be disassembled. Yeah. And then you're also going to have to use a soldering iron. So if you have no soldering experience, you could easily damage the PCB and kill the yeah. mouse. Um, so what we did instead is we created something called our push fit hot socket design. So let me see if I can do this. I cut my nails, so I might not be able to pull it out. There we go. So all I need to do is those two screws, I pull the shell body off and that's it. Okay, nice. So now the really cool thing is you guys see right here, we've got these beautiful ROG micro switches. Um, these are actually 70 million rated click. They have really nice crisp actuation. They have actually a gold plated contact, but all I need to do is pull out that switch. That's it. And you can literally buy all kinds of other switches. Just like your keyboards. Yep, exactly. If you want to go for crispier, louder, lighter, I even mod one. I have in one of my switches. I got these KL silent switches yep. and I put them in there and you can't hear it. Does it feel weird? Clicking? No, no, no. I, I love it because you know when I'm I'm working late at night, yep. I don't want to hear the clicking. Oh. I, I just want I just yep. want to feel it. So you do get used to it. Yeah. You know, but the cool thing is if you want really crisp and light, you want really smooth and light, you want fast, you want heavier you just can change out whatever you want and if you've ever experienced double clicking a lot of those times yeah. these switches it's due to the double clicking so instead of having to go buy a new mouse all you do is just swap the switch yeah, nice. right and uh this is an exclusive feature on rog mice so if you guys have ever wondered what we meant by that push fit socket design you can literally see here i'm in the middle of ltx you know but it literally what in less than a minute i was able to go ahead and open up the mouse and literally swap the switches if i wanted to so uh, a really cool feature uh, that we have available in terms of our mouse. So let me go ahead and take that back and I'm gonna let you keep getting to it here, Stuart. Well, we are nearly done. Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're almost there. Are there right? any questions while, you, while yeah. you're putting that together? I don't wanna jump too far ahead. Yeah, let's uh, see. Oh, we're doing awesome on time. Yeah, we got plenty of time. So let's see what we got here. Um, so somebody asking right here, um, Actually, if you want, you can go. Yeah, I can get it. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of angle yeah. it in there, and it'll kind of snap in there. Uh, so somebody asking right here is it goes. So is there a new release date for the ASUS 540 hertz monitor? I can tell you guys, I've been testing this monitor. I got lucky enough to get the early production sample of the world's fastest gaming monitor coming in at 540 hertz, and um, I tested it out with the 4090. And all I can tell you is, if you love motion clarity, you like that buttery smooth experience. You love that motion clarity in your FPS shooters. 
Uh, it's going to be an absolute dream. So I can't give you a date for it yet, but we're probably going to have a little bit more information as we get ready to jump into the very beginning of Q4. But uh, right now, I mean, I, we already have the benchmark. We just released an amazing update in coordination with NVIDIA uh, called ULMB2, which is a backlight strobing technology that we have for our RG Swift PG27 QDM monitor. So our 1440p 360 hertz monitor that when you enable the ULMB feature, it allows you to have an effective motion clarity of a thousand hertz. And that monitor is absolutely stunning if you care about motion clarity. So I think between that monitor and that 540 hertz monitor, of course, it is a 1080p based monitor versus a 1440p monitor. Those are going to be the two gold standards if you care about motion clarity and refresh rate. So make sure to keep it tuned. How simple was that to put together? Done. Simple, easy. right? I mean, Very really, easy. really sweet. Yep, yep. So let's Any see questions? right here. Um, so we got another user says, you make that mouse look so good. I, don't, I want one and I have people asleep in the next room. <laughs> um, Michael Gohan, that's going to pair nice with the Matrix, right? Um, what game can you play at 540 FPS? So a lot of them are going to be on the esports side. So, you know, you can do stuff like Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege. Um, it really comes down to most of the FPS kind of esports community that you're going to be looking at titles that are going to be at that ultra frame rate. And, of course, you are going to be talking about that you will need literally the fastest GPUs out there. So you're going to have to be looking at something like, you know, flagship 7900 XDX. Uh, you're going to be looking at 4080, 4090. Those really are the GPUs that you're going to need to be driving such ultra fa fast frame rates. All right. So, um, yeah, I think we're, we're good there on the yeah, questions there. So putting in this, let's uh... let's see where we're at. So we got everything pretty much mounted in there. We got our cables. So, yeah, I think we can. Do we want to mount the GPU? I think so. I think we're That's ready. It. All right. So let's let's go ahead and just do a little bit of a closer look right I'm here. I'm just going to sneak around and take out the, the slot covers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feel free. Feel side. free. I'm going to go ahead and pop over here to the front. Give everybody a, a little bit of a recap. So here you guys can see again, uh, for you guys that are joining us, this is the ROG Evangelion Wave 2 release. So we've got, of course, GGF here, Stuart Tonks, one of the best builders in the game. You guys can check out his links and his social media channel. So he's been collabing with me here, really much taking most of the duties on the build side. But we are essentially just been putting together all this awesome EVO2 limited edition ROG hardware in this full EVO build. So we got the Maximus Hero, the Ryogen 3, the Hyperion, we then have, uh, G excuse me, um, Crucial DDR5 Pro memory. We have also the Crucial P5, P5 Plus, right? Two terabyte uh, in terms of our M.2 SSD. We then have the Thor uh, P2 1000 watt based power supply, which also does support 12 volt high power connector. And then we also have, of course, the big boy, the uh, GeForce RTX 4090 OC EV02 edition. Oh, and then, uh, that's right. it comes with that. oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, one of the cool little cable ties. Yeah. Cable See ties. We go. We yeah, for the on. Thor. And uh, I think the last item that we'll have in there, probably that'll be the end point of the build, will be the Herculix, which is actually a really cool GPU support, which actually you can kind of adjust. Oh, it looks like a jack. You can fine tune. Yeah, it's, exactly. So that is the Herculix. We actually have three of these. We have what's called the Herculix, the Wing Wall, and then a standard ROG Strix, just graphics card uh, holder brace. So um, let's go ahead and get ready to mount in the graphics the GPU card. In. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. So, uh, of course, we are going to be doing a, a horizontal base mount. The GPU, uh, excuse me, the system, the chassis does support vertical mounting, but we don't have a riser cable. Um, so we are going to go with that. And plus, I really do love that, of course, it shows EVO 2's cool. character. And I think it's going to be that's a great the only time idea. you see the character. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I don't think you see the yeah, character. because here you see the character, and then you see their mech. Yeah, right. So it kind of, kind of comes through together right there. So I got the right ones. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And let's get that in there. All right, we are. Yep, you're We're locked good. in. Perfect. All right. Oh man, that just that feels so good. It looks so good. Um, absolutely beastly. And remember, here we do have a full quad LED zone. Yeah, so there's. Did I... The magnetic is just not the best on this screwdriver. Yeah, the screw, you got, you dropped the screw right there. Um, the cool thing, though, is that probably means that the screw is probably right over here. Because one thing that we actually did do with the GR701 this, is that we made all of these vent holes too small for screws to fall inside. So 
Uh, some people who have ever had that pain point of a build, they know that they might drop a screw and the screw actually drops on the inside of the PSU cabinet. And the worst part is when it drops and it goes inside of the power supply and you literally have to take out your power supply and you got to shake it all around to try to get the screw. So even a small detail, like we went in and we made all of those vent holes too small to have the actual screw drop into the bottom of the case. Um, but there is a beautiful four zone LED design that will illuminate here. We'll have the LCD that will also illuminate. We'll have the polymo display, which will be in the rear section, which will also illuminate. And then we'll have that full interior light panel, which will illuminate. Now, one of the really cool things about the GR701 as well, the Hyperion, is that whole light panel can be removed. If you want to remove it and run it on your desk, you connect it via a USB cable and you can go ahead and have that cool display. So if maybe you want to have like RGB fans there, you could put fans right there and take out that display and then walk it right on your desk. So that's a really, really cool feature. So uh, we're getting pretty much close to the wire here. We're gonna, we got the GPU mounted in, we've got our cable, we got the Herculex, and uh, then we're gonna get pretty close to the moment of connecting the keyboard and the mouse. And always that, 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 the, let's say yes. it's, the, it's the love or hate moment, right? When you hit that power button, right? Of uh, right. Is, is everything gonna power on? Is it gonna post, right? So here we do have the 12 volt high power connector. If you guys haven't dealt with this, of course, uh, newer generation graphics cards as opposed to the older graphics cards. Older graphics cards utilize the PCI Express power connector where, where for like a high-end card, you could have up to three of them. Now for the high-end cards, you only have a single connector, but you do want to critically ensure your fitment. So you want to ensure that that cable is fully seated and flush. So that is going to be important in terms of just making sure that it operates effectively, efficiently, and without issue. And uh, also you do want to try to minimize any unneeded strain to the connector. And I always recommend that after you connect everything, try to be a little bit cautious and going back and checking your connectors. Because when you do cable management, maybe you go in and you kind of put your hook and loop fasteners, or maybe if you're using zip ties, you might do a little bit of compression and it can kind of maybe pull a little bit of your cables. So you want to go back and double check that. Very similar, like a, a tip that I see, and I don't know how you feel about Stuart, for people that do water cooling, I always tell them, hey, if it's the first time for you, after you know a couple of days and even two to three weeks after your build, go back and check your fittings. Yeah. Because your fittings they'll loosen up a little bit, right? Just from the well, normal you get heat expansion and all yep. that. Yeah. So you just want to go go back, make sure that they're tight and that they're clean. Ooh, I, I I do think you did nail that color, that that yeah, choice there. Good. So why don't you actually come up from the bottom? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think if we pass it right through there, because it'll come right where the R is at, and it won't cross over there. I think we could go that route. But because these cables are new. Yep. They were still folded. Yep. So a tip when you do buy custom cables, just unpack them yep. and just stretch them out a little bit. Yeah, like yep. just, just yeah, leave just, them on a just, table. Yeah, yeah. Then, Let them breathe, right? Yeah. Because the, the plastic itself, it's got a little bit of malleability. So you just want to kind of let it breathe. You want to let it work, right? Let me see here uh, if we got any questions that might be popping up there. Somebody asking right here is that when is the ROG glass mouse pad coming out? Yeah, that is going to be the Moonstone. So we are going to be releasing our glass surface mouse pad. So if you're looking for that super slick, buttery experience, that will be coming out hopefully in early Q4 timeframe. So make sure to keep it tuned. We will have our upcoming Moonstone mouse pad. So overall looking good. Everybody's saying positive feedback right now. They're excited about the overall look. They're digging the vibe. They're digging the feel. So, oh, 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 there it goes. Now, this is the important one. Can we hear the click? Can we hear the click? Probably not. I just got to get it started first. Yeah. Oh, I heard the click. You probably didn't hear the oh, click. Push it too hard. I'll push it, push it <laughs> off the table. <laughs> but I do let you guys know is that is kind of a little bit of a tip that if you want, is you want to listen to that click. If you essentially put your cable in there and you don't necessarily hear the click, you might not have essentially fully seated the cable. So just as a little bit of inside tip, when you're going in there, you just want to listen for that click. It's very similar to why I tell people listen to the click on installing memory, right? When you put it in that memory, you generally will hear a little bit of a click in there as well, right? And then uh, that's a nice little cable comb. You can see actually how that comb, we can drop that in there. So we could go here, maybe somewhere. Kids. I mean, these, these combs are nice. They kind of fit really, really well. I mean, we can play around with it. 
Do you want to use it? Do we have to use it? We don't have to use it. Yeah, and I'll leave it up to you. Builder's well, choice here. Ask, ask the audience. Ask the audience. What do, you, what do you like? We'll show you guys right here. So it does include this kind of cool little cable comb. It's like a little bow tie. Cool. Yeah, so yeah. It, it is. It, it is a little bit of a bow tie, right? So what do you guys think? Should we add it or should we not add it? Huh? Yeah or nay? Let us know in the chat. While he goes ahead and unpacks the Herculix, what does the community let us know? GPS Stuntman is asking me about is there going to be any possible refreshes from Asus for Z790 motherboards? I can't give you all the details, but I can give you a little bit of a soft confirmation. Make sure to keep it tuned in the not too distant future. You're going to see some exciting news from Asus when it comes to new motherboards. Okay. Um, somebody asking here, is that the case with the EVA Audition 4090? That is right. This is all of the Evangelion based EVO2 based hardware. So again, if we just kind of go as a recap right here, we've got the ROG Hyperion EVA 02 in this build. We've got the Maximus Z790 Hera EVA 02 edition. We also then have the ROG Strix RTX 4090. That's right, OC edition, EVA edition. The ROG Ryogen 3 EVA edition. The ROG Scope RX EVA edition. Also have the wireless Gladius, R, uh, Gla, excuse me, RG Gladius 3 wireless aim point EVA edition. The Herculex, which is that GPU support, right? Which you've gone ahead and already uh, popped in there. And then last but not least, we've got that ROG Thor 1000 watt EVA edition rounding out our build in there. So looking pretty sweet. I mean, I think we're, we're, we're just about there. I've never getting, used this before. I'm assuming situated. it just goes like this. Yep, yep. And then yep, we just crank yep, it up. Yep, and now we can, what I love is you can finally. Yeah, you can make that little micro adjustment. It's like, well, I, I need you to swap me. Is that, do I need to go higher? Um, a little bit more. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. I think that's, yeah, I think that's good. Because I can't really see how little. Yep. No, nope, that's, that's looking good. Perfect. All right. So uh, I didn't see in the chat. Again, what do you think? What about you, boss? What do you think? Should we add it? All right. So we're going to add it. Let's go ahead and drop it in there. All right, let's get the let's get the keyboard. Oh, you know what? Now the question is that did we get the? Oh no, we, we've what? got the wireless, uh, but we don't have the the cable. But it's fine. We'll just do the wireless here. Would you like to power it on? Would you like to hit the power button? I don't know if the side panel is going to close, but it'll be close. What about you, boss? You want to hit the power button? Sure. All right, we'll we'll we'll, we'll let you hit the power button. Is that looking looking straight, looking good? I can't quite yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah, no, I like it. I mean, it'll be interesting because we'll see. Of course, we're gonna have the RGB light up here, right? So we'll see. So let's give it a second here. So let's get our Scope RX. Now, there's no operating system. We had a fresh, uh, a fresh M.2 SSD in here, but we'll still get all the default lighting and animation that's gonna, gonna go gonna ahead and pop up, on, guys. So. so let's go ahead and get our wireless adapter in here. We're going to put our wireless adapter. Great thing. It's integrated little storage bay on our Gladius 3 aim point, right? We're going to put that into that nice little, of course, pass-through USB that the Scope RX has. Let's prop it up because you need a little bit of that prop-up support, right? All right. Oh, you know what? Stuart, we got one peel. I got one peel for you. Oh, you did? You got one peel on the Scope RX, okay? Oh, nice. So you got one peel that you can go ahead and get done right there. All right, so let's go ahead. We got a little bit of cable management right there. And what do you guys think? I mean, that's overall the build. Now, we will put the gold door on there. Uh, let's go ahead and put the gold door just so we can kind of swing it out a little bit. for my peel. Where's my peel? Oh, your peel? Your peel's right there, boss. There's you not got, even a pull? You got to find out. Come on, you got it. Let's see. Let's see right there. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, there we go. Years of peeling experience. Easy. All right, all right. Let's give Stuart a round of applause right there with a little bit of a peel. Um, do we want to show the back? Uh, yeah, 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 sure. I went to a lot of effort to... <laughs> to give off some cable management. Yeah, go ahead. Let's go ahead and swing it around. For the 20th time. <laughs> All right. And there you guys go. So actually, 
really nice job actually you got your spacing right there you got that really the cool thing with just, this is it's flexible actually, yeah it's flexible. You, so yeah, you don't have to get everything, everything in there you got a little bit of room yeah. plus when you put the panel on it's got spacing in there as well you got the pass through points right there those cables these uh nice uh eva edition uh wraps also come included with the thor so you get those inside the box and then of course you see everything was wired into that integrated multi-channel controller yeah. which handles both fans and argb yeah. so we're all good to go there so We've got all wrapped up. So uh, let's go ahead and get the gold ore on this side first. Is it? All right. So we got one? side one. Because one's got a bit of yellow on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming the one with the yellow on is yeah. the front. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So you guys can see really easy to slip them on and off. And then right there, you got it. So go ahead and. Nine off close. A little bit tight. Yeah. We can go back and we'll, we'll tighten that up there. And let's get the other one on. Oh, there's there's a big peel on this one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do have a bigger it's up there. Yeah, that one is actually kind of a cool, a cool little. It's a it's 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 funny. The sticker is even a little bit in the vibe right there, right as well. Swing it out of it. Yeah. There we go. All right. So there's you guys can see how it'll look. It's got the tint on there. It's not we super want to take heavy. Maybe, maybe this is affecting. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this yeah. is yeah. a little bit smoky. The yeah. And we can also. Oh, the stickers on there. Yeah, we can remove that one off there. So you got one good big deal in there, yeah. right? So starting to come together right here. Let's see if we can get this one off here. Oh. Let's see. Now you got to go the other route. He's got to go guy. the other route and pray. Let's see if we can get it. All right, I'm going to go slow. I'm going to go slow. Oh. So I should be able to get this. Almost, almost. We almost got it. There we go. All right, more or less. Everyone see that. Got to wipe that up there a little bit. But overall, looking great right there. So overall, it got a fantastic look. Just a little bit of that soft tint in there. But of course, when we open it up, we we got that great look right there, right? So I will see the power cable, right? Yep, just the power cable. So I'll go ahead and remove that off once we power it on. We got our Gladius three right there. All right, boss. Why don't you go ahead and get ready? We got to get the power cable we here. We need a power cable. You got to uh, get the power cable. Can you try and get someone to find a power uh, cable? Where do we got? We got. Oh. The box I don't think cool. that there's one actually in there. You sure? There should be, but I don't know if they took it out. No, it's not there. Ernest, you might have to help us see if we can find a power cable. We're going to need a power cable. Let's see. So there we go. We got everything done. Normally, I will let you guys know if you are wondering and you do buy the Thor power supply, it will come with the actual power cable in the box. So you would attach that. But uh, a lot of the hardware that we got was a pre-production sample. So uh, we didn't necessarily have every single little item. So sometimes that's the nature of the beast when you're doing these builds. But overall, pretty sweet. Um, but what do you guys think so far? I think it's I think it looks fantastic. What do you think, boss? Oh, it's the most beautiful gaming piece that I've ever seen in my whole Awesome. Oh, oh, very kind Good words. Son. I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty kind words. And I do give a lot of credit to, I think, the amazing ID team that we have at ASUS, as well as, of course, the amazing, of course, support that we had from Evangelion in terms of being able to work with them on such a time-honored IP. Right. So you, it's going to all come together here. We're going to get ready. Moment of moment of truth here. Moment of truth. It's going to be a bit. Tight. Let's see right here. Ooh. Oh no, the power! Don't worry, we got it. We got it. We I got just, the cable, guys. I just hope I got the front panel connectors right. All right. Do we want this open or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So no, we'll we'll oh, we'll, we'll pull that off afterwards. So right now, you guys can already see. It's in standby, like uh, yeah, standby. Yeah, it's in standby. Power. So right now, we're already getting the really cool animation from the Ryogen Three. Now you can already see this is a really cool thing. All of the animations they are specific to Evangelion. Even the animations on the hero they actually shift into the mech mode which looks pretty sweet we're going to pull the panel off 
and allow you to go and hit the button. So what's your name, boss? Edmund from Edmonton. All right, fantastic. All right, so let's go ahead and hit that power button. It's up right up the top. Can you reach this red one? So this red one. Yep. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Oh, all right. Sweet. So, I mean, right off the bat, you can see you've got that beautiful display, of course, that comes on right there with the EVO2 integrated. You've got the Herculex that's lighting up, that really beautiful quad LED lighting zone. Of course, the Republic of Gamers right here, RGB lighting zone. You got the lighting, of course, coming in from the Ryogen fans. Spin the front of around a bit so they can yep. see the. Give you a little bit of tilt right there. there we I go. love this accent too with the Hyperion where you have these cool things. Again, I almost feel like the Hyperion was purpose built for anime, right? I mean, when you take a look at some of these design languages, they feel inherently like you should just see them in the backdrop of one of your science fiction or kind of battle inspired animation shows. So I feel like. What we did here is this was a perfect chassis for this collaboration. It really all comes together. I love just kind of the off and on vibe feel that you, you have here with, of course, the uh, green and the yellow and the black. It serves as a perfect contrast. So what do you guys think? Stuart, of so, course. Well, I'm you, surprised it's all been set to red already. Yeah, yep. So I'm not sure if, if that's yeah, it's all defaulted in the firmware. It, yeah, it's, or it's, if the controller up here is doing it. No, so. that's all stored in the EP-ROM. Okay. So it's all stored in the EP-ROM. That's also controlled by like on the motherboard side. So we dictate that. And again, okay. you guys can see if we turn back here, uh, the really cool animation that you have, of course, for the Ryogen. So of course you can go in there, you can customize all your- uh, you, Anything you want. Yeah, you can put animations. in your own gifts and animations. Uh, we had uh, another amazing builder uh, that we have a lot on our social media channels called Mr. Matt Lee. He told me with the expanded memory, he was able to actually put in over a two minute actually uh, oh, okay. run a video in there. So it was almost like, uh, it wasn't even gifts. It was like literally he could, nice. he could use a super amount of the memory that we had on here because we have increased the memory significantly from the, from the prior generation to this generation. So overall guys, uh, you can also see the really cool accents on the keyboard. The keyboard has all been lit up as well. And look, even this really cool keycap which you can see, oh, actually, see that one. That's, is that's translucent. One. Yeah, yeah. and then you can also see this one, which is translucent as well. So oh. even all these little subtle details, I think absolutely show you uh, the real attention to detail that our team has done to really that's be awesome. able to offer, I think, a really great looking collaboration. So that pretty much for the most part wraps up our build. Uh, we're actually done a little bit early. I'm gonna go ahead and pop Plenty into the time. chat here, guys. Take a look and see if we got any other questions from you. But uh, I first want to say a big thank you to Stuart. No, anytime. Thank, thank you so you. much for uh, joining me here thank on this build. And uh, thank you guys for joining us here on the stream. It's been fantastic to be able to go ahead and take you through this journey of some of our latest and greatest hardware from Asus and RG, as well as this amazing collaboration that we have. And I know for those you've been asking, again, uh, we don't have your specific release dates yet, but wait for more information very soon. Uh, we're going to be kicking off the first wave one release probably sometime in late August. And then we're going to be releasing all four waves of the components as we get to the end of October. So again, this will be a limited edition release. Um, if you love any of the hardware you've seen, of course, all of this is standard hardware and non eva edition and is currently available. So if uh, you're just interested in checking out the Ryogen 3, the GPUs, the Herculex, the Hyperion, even all the peripherals, you can get them in standard black. And even for some of the other components like the Ryogen and the Hyperion, and the Strix 4090, those are also all available in white as well. So you got some questions. Some uh, the rear fan not being RGB. Yep, yep, yep. That's so a good point. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So we actually get that. Sometimes people ask like, hey, why wouldn't you um, put in like RGB fans, right? So part of the, the, the kind of the balancing act is sometimes not wanting to put in more fan than people will really utilize, right? Because I'm sure as you know, as a builder and as I see in the community, we get so many people that pick their own choices yeah. that if we increase the cost just to put just in really it. nice fans, you won't use them. You might swap them out. And so our balancing act is trying to put fans in there that do a good job at giving you good airflow yeah. so that you have something that will work, but at the same time, um, you know, isn't going to necessarily add unneeded cost if you're going to swap those out to other fans, right? So that's the main reason why you find that we don't do that. Now, we do have some other chassis. Take, for instance, like our GT301 which is a much more price aggressive chassis uh, around a hundred dollars. That one comes included with yeah, ARGB okay. fans, but it kind of makes sense that maybe for that more entry level builder, oh, yeah, right? Not I'm not going to go spend literally a hundred dollars, which is the same price as my chassis on fans. Yeah. So why not have those fans already included? Yeah. So we do try to balance out that kind of design decision. Another question was no RGB memory. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, you could definitely go with that. But actually, I think that the black works in here. It works well, especially if we don't have windows. Yep. So if we had RGB in memory, when yep. we did that show moment of turning the pizza yeah, on, you would it have would this, have been RGB. It would have been so RGB, having yeah. that being subtle, just being yeah. black. The only, our, the only memory that probably would have not been RGB is if we would have maybe gone with, like, uh, one of our partners that does, like, RG certified, like a Vexer. Uh, or yeah, okay. um, or gel who have kind of like team yeah. RG certified memory. I believe the default pattern there is actually red. Okay, that so sick. that could have worked. But I think that these G skill yeah. dims, like we talked, excuse me, these uh, crucial dims, like we talked about, have a great look to them, and they have that great plug and, and play experience. This, so. Yeah, yeah, no, they these are fantastic dims. Like I said, guys, I have a full live stream that we did with our friends over at Crucial, giving you some insight into these memory uh, and why they actually make a great choice right here. So somebody giving us love. Great job, Stuart and JJ. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Janny saying, looks awesome, man. Um, you got GPS Stuntman says, JJ, my last piece of Asus hardware, the ROG Strix 4090 OC. I think for a lot of people, that is an end game goal in terms of picking up some hardware. So it is an absolutely beastly GPU. I know that you've had the opportunity to check it out. Pretty sweet. Okay, thank you so much. No, no maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> oh, looks like we got another CPU there. For us, right. awesome. Two's right. better than one. Very, very cool. Um, so, I think that's it, guys. So, I think that's going to go ahead and wrap us up. So, I thank you guys, everybody, for joining us on today's stream. If you guys want to find out about more uh, when it comes to the latest and greatest Asus hardware, make sure to check out our Asus weekly PC DIY stream. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on X. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook you can find yeah. us on all of the socials. Uh, we also have an amazing group, our PC DIY community, over 45,000 members where you can find out about all things ASUS-related, PC building, overclocking, water cooling, and so much more. Uh, we've got a great level of community engagement there. And, of course, if you guys want to find out about more Stuart, guys, check out his social media channels. You guys you got a website. GGF, GGF Events. Yep. yep. YouTube is GGF Events. Facebook, GGF Events, I think. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we've got those links in the description. So if you guys Perfect. are checking Thank us out you. on YouTube it. and Facebook, check them out. He's has some absolutely stunning builds, a great point of inspiration, and also has done some amazing content to really be able to show you the, the depth and the range of what you can do when it comes to especially water-cooled builds across a, a number of form factors, which is also pretty cool because yes. you don't focus just on the big. You've done gotta everything do small, from gotta small, do small the, medium. This, to me, this isn't even big. Yeah, it's not even so, the largest. Yeah, I'd say like it's, it's this, like 70 percentile yes. class. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, with that, take care. Take it easy. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your day. Uh, thanks for joining us. See you next time.